look, it looks okay. like it's getting comments already, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a ton of comments. We are live. Welcome back to the Who Moved My Freedom podcast. I'm Hank Strange. We're live from the Big Daddy Gun Studios right there. Big Daddy Gun Studios. This is episode 76, I believe. Awesome. Episode 76. And this dude right here is the special guest. I'm special, all right. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I don't know if you guys recognize him. He doesn't have a lower third. This is Mac, Tim from Military Arms Channel. Thanks for joining us, man. Thanks for having me again, man. It's it's uh, it's all my pleasure. Yeah, um, you know, I I can really appreciate that your life. You probably have not gotten a lot of sleep lately. Last no, few last days. last. Uh, yeah, we were just all down in, in Atlanta, right? And uh, we were down there to try to have our annual YouTube shoot and, and have a good time. And that's when all the news broke. I mean, mm -hmm. we had all the gun bills being introduced that, that week. Uh, we, we had, um, we just had just a whole flurry of things start to happen. And I started catching wind of some of these bills that were going to pass. And man, I just had to, I was there only a few hours. I bugged out. I drove all the way to Atlanta, man, a whole day drive just to stay there for a couple hours and drive straight back because I felt like I had to get back and make videos and, and try to get the names of these Republican turncoats and try to put something, you know, somewhat intelligent together and get it out there and get people calling their representatives. Cause I'm trying uh, to get folks motivated as we all are in social media to, uh, to stop these bills before they even have a chance, you know? Yeah. So I think that's something like um, if you don't realize how passionate Mac is about this, then you probably, um, you probably just don't even watch what he does because he's incredibly passionate about this. And when I saw you at the show, I mean, I was kind of fired up too, you know, um, my, my blood got boiling, but I, I could tell, you know, from, um, from your whole demeanor and everything, it's like you yeah. were there, but you weren't really fully there because your mind was just firing. And, um, Jason, the camera guy, man, we were coming through Chattanooga, which is all those really steep hills. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm on the phone, you know, I'm talking to NRA, I'm talking to all these folks, and I'm getting a sense of just how bad this is going to be. And, and I'm telling him, like, dude, we, we, we don't need to be going to Atlanta. We need to turn around, man. We got to start. Yeah. Fighting. And he goes, dude, slow down. You're going 96 miles an hour. <laughs> I was going to say, who the hell's driving? <laughs> and you saw that boat that I was driving, right? That uh -huh. MC, whatever it is. Oh, my gosh, man. So anyway, yeah, yeah I, was, I was pretty fired up, man. And I, I, when I get in that mindset, I, I can't have a good time. I can't go out and shoot and have a good time. I, I have to do something. You know, I'm not – it's just – I'm one of those guys that will sit there and obsess over something until I actually do something. And right. I still haven't slept, man. It's like I can't get a good night's sleep because my mind is spinning. Like, you know, what am I going to wake up to tomorrow? What can I do? What can – you know, who can I talk to? Who can – you know, I, I – I, who could can I listen to this fight? You know, it's it's insane, man. This what, is real. It's real. I mean, for you, it's it's not it's not a meme or anything like that. It's real for you. I think it is yeah. for me. It's the reason why. I mean, obviously, you've been doing this a lot longer than me, but I'm doing this because of passion. I'm not doing it because I want anyone to know who I am, because I honestly don't. Um, you know, I'm doing it because of passion and it's real for me. And we were just saying off air is the reason why I was like, you know, we need to go on air because people are missing what we're saying. And one of the things I think that people don't realize, like you, you've obviously been doing this a lot longer than me. You were born here. I wasn't born here and came here. And then lately in the last, I'm going to say like uh, maybe five, six years, I've been sharing my journey from the beginning on YouTube. I've gotten into it. So I'm way behind and there's things I'll never be able to do or have because of the, the bills and the laws and the freedoms that we've already lost. Yeah, it's you true. Know? It's, you know, if uh, I, I'm an old fart, so I still remember, you know, being a kid, being able to walk into a gun store and seeing M16s hanging on the wall the exact same price as an AR-15 and people complaining that it took three weeks to get the form back. And <laughs> <laughs> I look back what? Like, <laughs> Tell me what year that was. So if I ever get it, what year was that? Was Cause 18, if I ever get it, yeah, yeah. no, it was, no. <laughs> it was, it would have been the eighties, man. And uh, yeah. yeah, time machine. I'm going back to Indiana in the eighties. Yeah. So I, yeah, I, I, I was, yeah. I was a young man in the eighties and, um, yeah, man, I remember well, all that too. stuff. And so here, here, you know, like when I, I post something on Instagram to fellow people of the gun and I, I make a post saying repeal the Hughes Amendment and I have gun people saying, why do you want everybody to have a machine gun? And I think, wow, have we really fallen that far? This, this law yeah. that passed in 1986 has been there for over 30 years and people just really think that, you know, 
that the, the machine guns are more lethal than semi-automatics. I mean, there, there's, it, it's a, it's a silly argument. I mean, to ask, yeah, I could get off in the weeds in that. Yeah, no. It, most, a lot of, a lot of the viewers right now are former military, right? And ask a military person when they're in a gunfight, are they on full auto or are they on semi-auto? Right. Yeah. Um, but I don't it's, know. I get off in all sorts of different directions. Yeah. I mean, the just, thing is, I know Lola or Lola's not here. Otherwise, she would be giving me more specific directions for anyone who's watching. Like, I'm probably totally off structure and everything. That's because Lola's not here. And uh, <laughs> I did get a text from her. And she said, like, I should start with Mac where um, when, you know, all this news broke, what went down in Las Vegas. She, you know, yeah. she really liked to know timeline wise. How did you find out about this stuff that went down in Las Vegas? Because I think that's really where the, the spark came from for everything that we're dealing with now. So I don't watch a whole lot of mainstream media. I don't watch a lot of television. I live and, and get all my information from a you know, phone like most people, right? Right. So I'm just going about my business and my phone blows up. Turn on the news, turn on the news, turn on the news. Uh, active shooter in Vegas, you know. And, and always in the beginning, um, you think, well, you know, it's, it, it's, it's a lunatic mad at his girlfriend or something. Right. And, and you don't expect it to be as big as it was. And, um, you know, as I started to see just the scope of what had happened, cause it had happened the night before. Right. So I, yeah. I was asleep, woke up to all these messages. And you know, the first thing you think about is like, Oh my God, the people on the ground. I mean, that was the people that were in the middle of that, are just regular Americans. They're gun owners too. They're NRA, GOA, SAF members too. Mm -hmm. They're part of our community too. And they were under attack by a madman that had a motive that they won't release or don't know. But I was thinking, oh my God, you know, first of all, I started thinking about the people in the middle of this. I'm thinking, I hope that, you know, that nobody was hurt. And, and as they, they started talking more and more about how many people had died, I mean, you get sick at your stomach, right? Mm -hmm. But at no time, did I go, oh my gosh, we need to ban the gun. I was thinking about the lunatic that was doing it and what was motivating him. Yeah. Right. And that, that brings us around to the other argument that I, I don't understand. We in the Second Amendment community uh, face a lot of discrimination, for lack of a better word. So it is it is discrimination, hands down, man. Right. Because we don't people don't look at us like they would anything else, like cars or something. No, that's my point. So let me let me make a point here. So when a guy goes and buys a ZR1 Corvette, which is capable of breaking the speed limit three times over, he goes to his local bar, gets juiced up on a bottle of vodka, goes careening down a highway at 160 miles an hour, hits a minivan and kills an entire family. Do we blame the alcohol? Do we, do we call for prohibition again? Do we blame Chevrolet and the Corvette for building a car that could exceed the speed limit three times over? Or do we blame the driver? We always blame yeah. the driver, right? It, it absolutely is we, the driver. We, it, he it, made it, those choices. Guy, right. It's the driver, right? Same thing with the terrorist. When a terrorist walks into a market full of women and children and just people and detonates a bomb and kills and maims people, do we go, we need bomb control? Do we blame the bomb or do we blame the terrorist? Yeah, we it's always the blame person. the person. Yeah. Right? It's, look, I'll give you like this. This is going back a little bit before um, this thing in Vegas. Do you remember several weeks ago uh, there was the um, the the rally um, in uh, I guess it was it West Virginia, um, you know where there was like this anti um, anti statue rally, all this stuff. Oh was yeah, yeah. Whenever it's all up in arms about the yeah. the, the General Lee statues and right, yeah. And the, and the guy took the Challenger. Do you remember that he took a Challenger yeah. and drove into the crowd? So yeah. I have a Challenger. I know you've you've had one in the past. Yeah, uh, pretty badass one. I had to sell it. <laughs> YouTuber and sell it. Yeah, I know. You always send me pictures. <laughs> I my I, baby. <laughs> if I put up a, I don't know if people know this, but if I put up like a picture with my challenger anywhere on social media, and Max sees it, he sends me a picture of the one that he had. It's conveniently on his phone, and he's like, uh, "Mine was more powerful than yours, dude." <laughs> so yeah. the because thing is. So, so that, that guy used that challenger, right? And he drove into the crowd and, and he killed someone and, and hurt several people. And in the morning when I woke up, my son saw that I have one, you know, and they were really down. Obviously they were down. It's horrible what happened. And they were down because of that. But then they were like, dad, you know, he, that guy used a challenger. And I was like, boys, that's a piece of metal. Right. You know, it's, it's um, the, a person, a human being got in that car and turned it into a weapon. 
It has nothing to do with our piece of metal that's outside or the way that we think or anything like that. These things are separate, you know, and it's terrible. Like we, we, you know, you blame something on a gun. Now in this particular case, they're blaming it on slide fire or bump stock. And Which you don't even need to bump fire a gun. I was bump no. firing AKs and ARs as a kid growing up in Kansas off my shoulder. Uh, I, I need to get permission from my YouTube lo overlords, but I, I would like to do a video showing, because when you watch my political rant video, I actually pulled some other videos of people bump firing from the shoulder, bump firing from the head. Yeah, I saw that. If, if there's nothing new about bump fire. The stock doesn't make the gun do anything it's not already capable of. And that's why it makes me so freaking angry when people in our camp are saying, yeah, let's just, it's reasonable. Let's, 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 let's give them up. But they don't think past their nose because the legislation is so open-ended, it lets the ATF define what a standard rate of fire is and what an exceeded rate of fire is. And that's how you open the door, just like the sporting purposes clause, to ban self-loading guns. Yeah. And, and these, these, these supposedly gun people trying to throw some people to the sharks and a business owner to the sharks who happens to be a combat veteran that has steel plates in his fricking head. They're willing to throw Jeremiah Cottle and his whole industry and everybody under the bus because they want to protect their little gun. Yeah. Well, they're not going to get my gun if I just give them this guys, you know, guys, yeah. wake up, stop yeah. it. We have to defend ourselves. They're not. It, and this is what's really crazy about this legislation, man. You can see the evolving thinking of the anti gunners, right? So the, the, they know if they come out and say assault weapons ban, that it's going to get us motivated. Right. They say, well, we just want to ban rate increasing devices. Notice the bills don't say anything about yeah. a slide fire stock. Also, they, they know just enough. They're watching us just enough to know, because even I said, like when, when it did come out that this is a slide fire thing. And a lot of us feel this. I don't have any slide fire videos because it's never worked for me. And I've right. never been interested in getting it to work. But that has nothing to do with anything. I that that has a right to exist. You know, Absolutely. so because it doesn't change anything. That's like saying, well, you know, we gotta get rid of birdcage muzzle devices because they suppress a flash. Or we have to, you know, get rid of pistol grip stocks. It's the assault weapon nonsense all over again. It's yeah. it's an accessory that doesn't do anything to change the functionality of the gun. Because I can teach you in 30 seconds how to bump fire one of your self-loading rifles using nothing more than your belt loop and your thumb. Right. In 30 seconds, I can teach you how to do it. You'll be dumping magazines. So how did we How did we get from what happened in Las Vegas? I mean, and we could talk about that forever, right? Because yeah. up till now, we're, we're several weeks into it and we don't know what the hell's going on. There's like, there's a lot of fake news and I don't want to get into putting out fake news there, but you know, we don't know the timeline. We don't know if he shot the security guard first and then he started shooting people. You know, we don't know what the, the span of time is between that. To be honest with you, we don't even know where the security guard is. <laughs> right. You so know, the timeline thing, you know, and, and, and this kind of kind of upsets me, too. You know, I've lived through a lot of tragedies. Um, you know, I've seen a lot of things, including I remember, you know, as being a very young kid watching the space shuttle blow up. And, you know, yeah, me, too. Uh, but when, when, uh, so how old are you? Just out of here. I think we talked about this before. Yeah, I'm, I'm 45. I'm, al I'm almost 50. Oh, you're almost 50. I got, I got okay. less than a year to 50. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So See, I graduated high school in 88. So yes, I remember the shuttle blowing up and all that stuff. Yeah. And, and you know, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's, it's so weird to see how things have um, evolved since then. And the conspiracy theories that, that come about, I mean, even then it almost immediately started. I mean, first the tasteless joke started like NASA stands for. And I, I, even I was a kid when this happened. And it's still burned into my memory because even as a kid, I knew it was morally corrupt. But, you know, people were making jokes like, oh, NASA stands for needing another seven astronauts. And, and then the conspiracy theories start like, oh, well, it was a planned explosion, 9-11. You know, I, the, they hadn't even stopped the rescue efforts and the conspiracy theories were already starting to circulate. They weren't planes. They were missiles. And, you know, and, and, and it just turns my stomach that once again, when this happens, they, everybody wants to turn to a conspiracy theory. I just I, I wish people would stop that. You know what I mean? It's just the, the, the yeah. conspiracy theories just need to stop. Um, we may may or may not find out a motive. I mean, who knows what motivates this guy? But I'll tell you what, this guy had it out for the people at that concert, because I know this much. If you walk into a room and find a, a female laying dead on the floor that's been stabbed 102 times, you're probably can safely can, can conclude from that scene that that woman was killed by somebody that absolutely hated her freaking guts. They mm -hmm. wanted her dead. It was personal. It was a vendetta. 
right? right. It wasn't a robbery gone wrong. So right. you, can, you can kind of figure that out. This guy shooting and wounding so many people, he had to hate the people he was doing that to, mm -hmm. right? And so there is a motive. There is clearly a motive. I believe it's a political motive. We may never know because this guy had months to plan it out. And the debate we're having about our gun rights right now, whether or not we should be allowed to have self-loading rifles, may have been his agenda. He may have carried out that unbelievably atrocious act just to get gun control enacted. He made himself a martyr for the cause, potentially. I mean, who knows what's going through this lunatic's mind? But I'll guarantee you right. he had something out for the people he was trying to kill because nobody would do something like that to people that, don't, that they don't hate. Right. So Absolutely. Let me, let me just uh, stop right there for one second. I just want to do some quick stuff. Lola has come in. <laughs> so <laughs> break this out. Yeah. Uh, I want to remind everyone who's watching right now. I want to thank you guys for watching. First of all, lots of comments and all that. Uh, please click the thumbs up of this video and then share it on your social media, whatever social media you have, share it with uh, friends and family. OK, uh, we really appreciate that. Um, Forged from Freedom actually just donated 10 bucks to the chat. So I'm going to tell you guys what they said here. Uh, this is from Forged from Freedom, which uh, they make like uh, my shirts. I think, I believe they make your shirts also. Yeah, I'm working with Forged from Freedom now too. Those guys are freaking awesome. Check out yes. our stores on ForgedFromFreedom.com. You can yeah. find Hank Strange shirts. You can find Where, where the hell is that? Where's that, um, where's that shirt you had on over the weekend? <laughs> Oh, the, the you suck, <laughs> not not safe for advertisers. Uh, yeah, yeah that, that's for all YouTubers from Forge from Freedom. So you should be able to get it in your store here soon. Oh, cool. Okay, I, cool. I, I think that, that's the plan. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah, that was an awesome shirt. We have to put that I out there. With it. Uh, Marco from um, he's an Instagrammer mm -hmm. and uh, gun channels underscore. And um, and he he worked with Forge from Freedom to come up with that shirt. And they were gracious enough to share it with the uh, with the rest of the, the YouTube community. So oh, uh, awesome. Kind of an inside joke. But if you guys see the shirt that you'll see me at, at Iraq Veterans shoot wearing this shirt that says you suck and looks like the youtube logo yeah um, and it says not safe for advertisers and has a gold coin that's what we see when we log into youtube to look at our videos when they're all demonetized and uh, it's kind of yeah. an inside youtube joke yeah and it's happening a lot right so we should probably Every video I upload yeah yeah it's happening a lot and um definitely um there's guys who did uh bump fire videos and they're deleting their videos and i think that gives you a strike right yeah, so that's the other thing that happened while we we're at Iraq Veterans. So I wake up on the morning of the 7th, and, you know, everybody's like, hey, man, did you have a bump fire stock video? They're getting yanked by YouTube. I log into my YouTube account, big orange page, right? You are in violation of community standards. You've been given a strike. Two more, and your account's locked forever. Wow. And I was like, what? You know, and, and so I had to take care of that, too, right? So I had to go through and look for all my bump fire stock videos and make them all private so that YouTube didn't kick me off YouTube. Um, but YouTube, yeah. is, YouTube is a mess, man. YouTube is anti-gun. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. And yeah. here's what's kind of interesting. So I, I went to bed last night with my political rant video, which was picked up by many, many news organizations. Ben Shapiro actually reposted it. I, I saw mean, that. It, it, it went crazy, right? I woke up in the morning and I had, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this, but I had 400,000 views. See that 400,000? Yep. Go look at my video now. You're going to see about 200,000. YouTube took away 200,000 views to, to bring me down, I believe, in the, um, the trending videos. They yep. didn't want, they, they're squashing my political rant. I that's what people, that's what people don't understand. They, they control, go ahead, throw that up again. A couple hours ago. Throw that up again, Tim. So I, I locked it on you so you folks can see that. Yeah. So they are, they are controlling the algorithms. And that's what people don't understand about this. Like even before all of this started, which we're fighting with them in the background, because basically they're using, they, they have control over us. They control the agor algorithms and they could change it. Right. Hillary didn't win. I'm sure that's obviously that's what they wanted. And if she would have won, you guys would see even worse stuff than this going on. I think they have a little bit of fear that the current administration might start um, doing things like checking into whether YouTube should be declared a, a utility and all that stuff. Right. You, you know, know so. It, it's, uh, so so I'm a libertarian. Right. And, and it is YouTube's house. They can do what they want. But that doesn't mean I can't speak out against it. Right. If they want to ban me, they have every right to ban me, right? Um, so I, I, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with personal property rights. I mean, I'm a store owner. If somebody comes in and they are some far left lunatic that is a PETA supporter and they want to yell at me and throw 
red paint on me in my store, you're darn right. I'm yeah, gonna... right. Yeah. It's my private property and YouTube is private property until they declare it a utility. Now it is a monopoly in my opinion. And we have antitrust laws and we have you know laws against monopolies. And I do think they should be broken up because they have no competitors, but um, that's just me being kind of mad at YouTube, but um, yeah. <laughs> it is private property. So if they don't want gun people on YouTube, it's their right to kick us off, but it doesn't mean I can't make a stink about what they're doing because they're not treating us fairly. They, they are, you know, people say, well, Mac, I see ads on your videos. I remember the flap when um, uh, the, the Forgotten Weapons guys, they've voluntarily demonetized all their videos. Yet YouTube continues to run ads on their videos and profit from their videos and not give Forgotten Weapons one red cent. But then there was this flap where another YouTuber called Forgotten Weapons out, which was totally tasteless. And they had to defend themselves. They did a screenshot showing that all their videos are, are voluntarily demonetized. It's a gray coin. Mm -hmm. And um, YouTube is just running because they get so many views. YouTube is running ads on it. They're keeping all the money. YouTube screws us routinely. You know, I have just as many views like my CPM is as high. I have a very high CPM for any YouTube channel, but yet my views are double what they were the same time this uh, same time last year. Yet my monet, my earnings are 60, 70 percent down. Yeah, they're playing lots of games like that. I don't think uh, I don't think people understand it. And, you know, I think the solution. Well, actually, first of all, let me just I did not read the thing from Forge from Freedom. So gun uh, control is about con questions and comments, man. I wish I had yeah. freedom. Yeah, we're going to go through this. Lola, she's here. She's going to put up your comments. Just go ahead and post them. Forge from Freedom said gun control is about control. Look how many things we've lost over the last hundred years. They keep chipping away because they know little chips in the end amount to large chunks of freedom taken away. Absolutely true. I agree with that. Um, so the thing I was going to say to you, like, obviously, you know, we were talking about YouTube and how, you know, because of what we believe, we don't we don't really want to go the route of making the, having them be declared a utility because of what we believe. You know, we're, we're passionate about what we believe. Probably the best thing for us to do is to build our own platform. I know you're the founder of Full 30, right? You're one. Of, I can't or, take all the credit. I'm one of three yeah. people started. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, you're one of the founders of that. And, and you know. Um, the big limitation that we all have going in here is, is money and resources, right? Yeah, we sunk a resources. lot of money into that. And there's no way to compete with YouTube. YouTube is like what MySpace used to be and what Facebook currently is. They're, you know, they're a monopoly. And in trying to peel away people to another platform that for niche video content, right? So for just gun, gun content, it's hard because all their friends are on YouTube. All the discussions they're normally having are on YouTube. They have to leave the comfort of YouTube to go somewhere else to watch firearms videos. And, and, you know, if they ever kick us off on YouTube, well, we'll be over on full 30 and we'll open the floodgates and let everybody in at that point. But, yeah. uh, but the reason we haven't to this point is because, um, you know, we're in a, a very, very rough market right now. A lot of companies are pulling their ad budgets and it costs us very real money to host all those videos, to stream all those videos. And if we open the floodgates and just let anybody upload, even if their video only got one view, that costs us a lot of money to process it and to store it. And eventually you run into the YouTube problem where you have so many people using you for hosting uh, that aren't earning money back that they're not profitable. YouTube isn't profitable. No, they, it's billions of dollars. It's billions. Yeah, they, and it, they lose money hand over fist. Yeah. And even for like, let's say you brought in the gun community or, you know, I think we really need to try to do this. It's not just a gun community thing. Lots of people are being affected by what uh, all these social justice warriors yeah. that own and control these companies are doing. Commentators. I mean, take a look at uh, the Franco and you know, yeah. some of the big guys, PewDiePie, all those guys that don't that don't tow the uh, the, the far left lunatic line. Um, they get squashed by YouTube. Yeah. It doesn't so, matter how big you are, man. No, absolutely not. We have to do something about it. Here's the thing. Like somehow we all have to get together and it's relative to like what's happening right now. Right. It, we, we obviously all have our differences and we put our resources in different places. And, you know, but we if we don't get together, we're going to we're going to cease to exist. If we don't at some point come together and put all, all our resources together and make this happen and do things like build our own platforms and and change the message, um, because just to keep this going, you know, okay, so we had this thing that happened in Vegas. And then to me, I think timeline wise, I don't know how you think about this. I think the media was putting pressure on Trump and saying, yeah, you're going to do something about gun control now. And then and then he came out and said, yeah, we're going to take a look at that. Right. Well, guys, here's here's my views on Trump. And, and you know him well as 
better than I do because you lived in New York. Um, Trump has been a Democrat his entire life. He switched parties and he did complete 180s on many things from abortion to gun rights to um, all sorts of stuff. He did a complete 180, became a Republican. And, and I think he pulled the wool over many people's eyes. Now, I, I do think that he means well, and I do think that people can change because right. I've changed. I used to be a Republican and now I'm a libertarian. So I went away from the Republican Party. Right. Because they represent me or what I believe. Yeah, those things don't necessarily. I mean, I'm still registered here in Florida as a Democrat, believe it or not, man. I mean, well, because we, Flo it, Florida's crazy. You can only in the in the uh, primaries, you can only vote for the party that you're registered with. And if you're independent, they you can't do anything unless there's an independent running. So Indiana, Lola switched to independent. And when there's a primary, she can't even vote. Yeah. Indiana. I mean, all sorts of <laughs> all these states have goofy laws. Indiana yeah. you have to declare a party to vote in the primary. So you have to say I'm Republican or Democrat. If you say you're not either one, you don't yeah. get a vote. And I think so, the two party system is part of what's killing us. I mean, that's a whole oh, it's absolutely tangent. What's, what's killing. Our founding fathers warned us not to do that. And we never listened to them. Yeah. But getting 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 back to to what happened in Vegas, um, you know, it, it always it always turns to a discussion whenever a lunatic does something. The, the anti-gun media, which is about 99% of it, we're even seeing Fox make a shift now to the left. Um, they always want to blame the gun. It's always the tool's responsibility. We got we to gotta ban guns. It's when, you know, going back to the analogy I gave earlier, you know, we don't, we don't call for banning firearms, or I'm sorry, vehicles, or banning alcohol, or banning bombs that terrorists strap to their chests. No, they want to ban the gun. And, it, and it's, it's, it's insane that the, we allow the left media, the anti-gun media, to drive the narrative. What is the most common phrase you, you hear now? And, and it's been creeping into uh, our, our, our vernacular for a while, but um, people have this in their mindset now, and, and, and it's been the, the anti-gun errors, the anti-gunners that have driven this narrative. They say gun violence. We need to prevent gun violence. Yeah. We need to stop gun violence. We need gun control to stop gun violence. And people don't think about that. It's brilliant. And, and, and those those that we battle for our very liberties are not stupid people. I no. mean, it's easy to write them off as idiots, but they're not. I mean, they're communist socialists. Mark very much to that, but they're not stupid. And they have made that terminology normal. So people go, oh, yeah, gun violence is really bad in America. Yeah, really? we have to do something about this gun violence because it's not people. <laughs> what what yeah. violence is this inanimate object caused? This this right. this doesn't do anything. This is a harmless device. Now, if I point this at something and pull the trigger, now I've done something, but it's not gun violence. A gun is an inanimate object. It, a gun is incapable of violence. But the person using the gun is perfectly capable of violence, but we never want to talk about that. Anytime a firearm is involved, it's automatically the gun. Everything else is the person's fault. But the minute yeah. you pick up and use a gun, it's gun violence. Yeah. I so, mean, if, for example, we've banned machine guns. And what's happened since then? Is there is there no quote unquote gun violence? Is there no murder? Well, <laughs> what's funny is before they banned machine guns in 1986, there were no instances where there's like one or two where a legally owned machine gun was even used in a crime. And ironically, one of the crimes was an off-duty police officer machine gunning the guy that was nailing his wife. I mean... Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> which is not necessarily a crime. So. It depends on where you're at. Yeah, some states yeah. have actually, yeah. you know, said that that's justifiable <laughs> homicide. But it, it's, um, you know, it, it's never been machine guns have never been an issue. Silencers have never been an issue. With ten bucks and twenty minutes in a hardware store, I can build a very efficient silencer and put it on a gun. It's not like the technology is hard to do. It's it's, it's stupid simple. But yet they're never used in crime. Right. Why? Because it doubles the size of a handgun. Most criminals want a small handgun that they can conceal. They want to put a silencer on it. They don't care if they somebody hears bang. They're out of there in 30 seconds. Right. You know what I mean? So but the left drives and the anti gunners drive that narrative that we have gun violence. We need to ban machine guns. We need to ban everything. We need to ban bump fire stocks. And what it all boils down to is they just don't want us to have guns. And, and it's also ironic that many of these people that are always calling for gun control and reasonable gun control, which is an oxymoron. There's no such thing as reasonable gun control. Um, they have armed bodyguards. Nancy Pelosi, uh, 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 not Nancy Pelosi, but- um, um, Dianne Feinstein. Dianne Feinstein. She actually had a concealed carry permit in San Francisco until she got caught, out, busted out on that, and then she got rid of it. But she always <laughs> yeah. has armed bodyguards. They'll never get rid of their bodyguards. They'll never do that. All right. I don't personally carry a gun. 
but my bodyguards do. They're a bunch of hypocrites, but they think that they're better than us. They think that they're royalty and we're serfs and that, that you know, what they need to be reminded of is they serve at our pleasure and our leisure. They, they serve us. And if we ever get sick of their BS, that's when Lucille comes out. And, and, and by the way, oh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Lucille Me and Lucille the here Washington. Um, let's see. The, is there a bullet? You said there's a bullet in that, right? Can we see yeah, it? This is made by a prop house that actually uh, that, that makes the uh, yeah. one of the actual props used in the show. Yeah, that's pretty cool, man. Foreign Adventures or something like that. I, I'll be doing some. I'll be including that in more videos. It's kind of funny. Oh. Cool. Is that so? Is that uh, customized for Military Arms Channel? I do have one. Yeah, I have this one. This one's a prop, so it's not very heavy. But oh. I have fully. I have a Louisville Slugger that's heavy as heck, uh, and that has even more barbed wire wrapped around it, and it's it's uh, it's it's quite usable. <laughs> oh, okay. Is that classified? It's pretty scary. It's, is uh, it an assault weapon? It probably is. We, it's we definitely have, suppressed. We have some bats wrapped in barbed wire because yeah, you know, it's definitely this is suppressed. Bat. This is this is bat violence. This thing is is capable of incredible violence all on its own. Yeah, that thing can get up and beat the living daylights out of you. Yeah. <laughs> if only well, it's if only up on me in the middle of the night sometimes. Yeah, yeah. if I mean, only it could kill it zombies, it right? At once, yeah. Yeah, if, if it could only kill zombies on its own, you know. I mean, it, so the thing is, is that, well, like what I was saying is I think that Trump and, and um, you know, we, we all wound up in that position where we supported Trump. This is the weird thing about Trump for me. And I was telling you that, uh, beforehand, I grew up in New York. I've, uh, I knew, I've met Trump a couple of times. I'm not like friends. I don't know him. I just grew up in New York. I used to be a doorman um, in, a, in a very prestigious hospital in New York. Um, I don't think I'm going to mention it. <laughs> yeah, no, don't give out too many personal information. But, yeah, but, um, you know, and, and I dealt with uh, Trump's mom and all that kind of stuff before she uh, before she passed, all of that. So the, the weird thing, like you said, man, he was a Democrat for a long time. This video, which I've shared before, of Oprah, Oprah in the 80s, I think it was in 1988, encouraging him to run for president. Yeah, okay. I remember that, yeah. Yeah. So the thing is, is that then when he was actually running as a Republican, what was weird to me is he all of a sudden became a racist, you know, which <laughs> well, was like, <laughs> which is so insane. He has an R on, the, on his thing. Now he's a racist. You know what's funny, man? It's like, and I'm not a Republican and I don't defend the party, but what's ironic about all that is it was the Republican Party that walked hand in hand with Martin Luther King. It was the Republican Party that worked to end slavery in the United States. The Republican Party has always been the party of equal rights for everybody. It was the Democrats and Blue Dog Democrats, um, in many cases, that uh, that were actually the people that were the problems, yeah. that were the oppressors. All, but all of this is turned around where everybody thinks the Democratic Party is isn't racist, and I, I still contend that they are. I think they want to keep everybody under their thumb, um, but that's another discussion. I, yeah, I think people don't realize this. Like all of this is. Um, Thanks, by the way. Lola just gave me something to drink. Uh, I'm, I'm about out of my Pure Leaf. Yeah, it says Casuza. Oh, but Pure, is Pure Leaf paying you the, the billions now? Is this that who's sponsoring you? Sponsor for this one. Um, <laughs> yeah, Pure Leaf. This is the extra sweet tea. Uh, it's, all, it's made with all sugar, guys. Really good. Check it out, your local. Yeah, <laughs> that's two. That's okay. 250 calories. I saw it there. I, I hope you. You know, I hope you enjoy that kajillion. That I don't even. I never even heard of this Casuza. It's two percent juice, and I have no idea how many freaking calories. What's the other ninety-eight percent? <laughs> I don't, dude. I don't even. <laughs> <laughs> Some chemical I've never heard of. I don't want to know. You know, all of this stuff is really complicated. Like here, I, I live in Florida, and there's a and and I live in like you know farm country, so it's gun guys and uh, die, you know dying in the wool, but also a lot of them are Democrats as well. Not for the reason, the same reason as me. I just don't like political parties and I'm independent, right. but you know, it's a whole complicated thing. But they're Democrats because that goes way back, like you just said, yeah. to slavery. Yeah. But let me yeah. also say this, guys. I don't typically talk about parties and I don't, there are anti gun Republicans and there are anti gun Democrats. It's not being anti gun, obviously. We had 10 turncoat Republicans introduce uh, this most current legislation. Right. I would I'd estimate probably 30 percent of my audience self identifies as being a Democrat. And I'm fine with that because I don't yeah. like the Republican Party either. So, yeah. you know, I, I, I don't like to I really shouldn't. And I don't like to draw boundaries based on political party affiliation, because I don't think that's fair, because there are plenty of Democrats that are pro gun. Yeah, we're too um, complicated. We're too complicated. I mean, there's like um, outright. Yeah. Um, you know, there, there's gun guys that make that have YouTube channels and they're Democrats and all that kind of yeah. stuff. 
you know, and then some of I, us I, don't even I, give I, a crap what what political party we're connected to. I don't care enough to change it because I don't really want to be connected to the Republican Party. The, the whole thing is just too weird. And I think honestly, like what we're doing, um, I, this might sound, you know, really vain to people, but what we're doing, this is now and it's the future of all of this kind of stuff, right? We're better organized than a lot of these parties and organizations. Well, we are because, you know, social media is awesome because even though they hate us, um, it's awesome because it gives regular people like you and me a voice. Anybody can create a YouTube channel. Anybody can create a Facebook page and do what Ben Shapiro did. I mean, you have that opportunity using social media. If you're dedicated, I mean, I've been doing this for 10 years almost, you know, 10 years of constantly producing videos every week, trying to build an audience. That's a significant portion of my life, but it, it's allowed me to have a voice. And now I can use that voice, in my opinion, for good. And there's a lot of us out there. Yeah, and it's real. It's real. I know you don't have like I always think you should probably have a couple million um, people subscribers. So I just want to encourage everyone to go subscribe to Military Arms Channel. If your asses are not subscribed to Military Arms Channel, I don't know what the hell's wrong with you. But you know the thing, is, you do have a lot. I think you've got like uh, what are you now? I don't even. Is it seven hundred thousand? Uh, I just, I just, I just passed six hundred. I mean, yeah. Like, okay. So the thing is, but those are those are like dyed in the wool people, and that's the thing I think a lot of folks don't understand that some you know other you not like necessarily what we're doing, but other YouTubers out there can have like millions, tens of millions of people. They're not all in America. They don't necessarily vote. And all kinds of weird things that go along with that, but that's a lot of people, man. That's the the following that you have is bigger than probably all the magazines and, and blogs and stuff like that put together. We reach three to just shy of four million people a month, um, yeah. so that's that that's bigger than any of the the the, the print rags and stuff. But you know, it, it's that voice though that is given to us by our followers, and I would agree that most of my followers, because of the type of content I produce, are gun people. Um, they're not your, your casual gun owner. Uh, there are some other channels that mix entertainment with firearms and they're successful in doing that and getting, you know, millions of, of subscribers. But, you know, I'm just not a comedian. I'm, I, I don't have that talent. And so, you know, my videos are just about guns. And so if you really like them, that's, you're going to subscribe to my channel. If you're more into entertainment, you'll find other channels that have found a way to mix that entertainment in with firearms ownership. And I love them to death. I mean, there's a, there's a bunch of good ones out there. Uh, Demolition Ranch is, is a perfect example. Oh, yeah. That's a yeah. Great dude. And he has a massive following. And I would say he's an amazing entertainer. Uh, you know, yeah. he's a veterinarian by trade. But man, that guy's got the gift yeah. of humor. And, yeah. and he's also what I found out that the ladies find him very attractive. That's probably what I, at least I, I don't have that. Hates it, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> Such a massive following. And, and the guy's so stinking. Funny. But when you meet him in person, this is what's funny. And, and, and so how many times have you met a YouTube personality and they're completely different than their, than their online persona? A lot. Not, right? Yeah. I yeah. Think Matt's very outgoing and is, is the, the, the center of attention in a room. I've sat at a table with other YouTubers and bloggers and, and stuff having dinner and Matt's the most quiet person. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, Was that at the thousand men? You turn a camera on him, man. And yeah, man, he's Mr. Personality and he knows how to, you know, he's right. awesome. And was that, a, was that a, I think that was, well, I know you've probably um, hung out with him uh, quite a bit more than I have, but I know at the thousand man thing, it's like, he almost wasn't there until he turned on his camera. Yeah. Then, then, then he's Matt from Demolition Ranch. Yeah. yeah. And that was like the video that I've been in that has the most views ever. And I'm in there for like a <laughs> fraction of a second, but I was so happy about it. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Matt's yeah. a great dude. And, and we need him too, you know, but a right. lot of the guys won't go political. Right. Um, and I, I try to avoid it. I try to keep politics off my channel. I just want people to have fun and talk about firearms. And I want to show the responsible use of firearms because, um, you know, it, I, I think that helps our community as a whole. But when times like this happen, you know, I feel the need to go political. I need to use the voice that I've been blessed with um, to, to try to stop legislation that would strip us of our freedom. And, it, and it's just sad that we always every time there's a tragedy, it's sad that we have to go oh my gosh, this tragedy is terrible. But then our minds immediately go to, oh man, here comes more gun control. Yeah, but I don't, I don't understand how you oh, separate. Yeah, you have people standing in front of a, a, a monitor calling for gun control. Right. You know? I mean, but how do you separate it here, right? Because it's just like, I'm, I'm, I'm heavily into cars as well, right? Um, matter of fact, in about, I think in about two weeks or something, I'm going to see Michelle in Vegas. So 
Um, I'll probably be able to tell you guys what kind of security and all that these hotels have put into place. Yeah. I, since... I, go ahead and finish your thought. Then. Well, what I was going to say is, you know, I'm into cars and all that, but it's like you were saying, you know, the, the analogy that you brought up about someone, you know, using a very powerful car. We still, I still don't want anyone to regulate those because I like them. So if, if people think that they can really separate all these things, we're going to have regulations of all this stuff. We already have, even with cars, we've got regulations that are going to come in. And this yeah. thing that gives us, like, what the hell are we living on this planet for? You know, we're as human beings, if they take we're, everything. We're supposed huh? to be the land of the free and the home of the brave, you know? And I, and I see a, a bunch of cowardice in a lot of people, and I certainly don't see freedom. I've traveled to countries in Europe that have better gun laws than we have. Yeah. You know what? And, and that's what I think. I think it is. They do want us to be mindless drones. They want us to be slaves. I know that, you know, lots of people get caught up in this whole thing and they think that it's only like, you know, black people or Africans that have been slaves. Everyone on the planet, every race has been a slave at some point. And right oh, now, at this yeah. And right now, at this moment, there are people who are slaves, like in the literal sense of the word. But they want us all to be to be mental slaves. And how, how are you going to live in a world where all you do is you're just part of the machinery? You're just a cog and you can't right. enjoy or have, you know, have anything that, get, that brings you kind of some kind of pleasure, enjoyment. You're able to unwind because some person decides to take that thing and, and use it to be destructive, whether it's flying a plane, driving a car, riding motorcycles you know, or, or shooting guns or, or anything or like that. Yeah. And that's, and I always like to liken this, this whole argument about gun control to prohibition. How well did prohibition work out for us, folks? It, it didn't last long. And there's a reason why, because prohibition get, made an even bigger problem when they banned alcohol in the United States, which again, is amazing to me that they did that. I can't believe they did that because that was just after the turn of the century, man. And, and America was still a young country. And we were so prideful about our freedom, but they banned the, the production and sale and consumption of alcohol. But when they did that, they gave rise to crime, organized crime. Right. It's because of prohibition that we had the mob come about, the mafia. And to this day, we still deal with the ramifications of prohibition. They, they quickly undid it and, and made it legal again. But they didn't learn their lesson. I mean, none of us have learned our lesson because that happened before any of us were born, or most of us. Uh -oh. But, you know, it, it's... <laughs> There's some vampires out there. That, that, yeah. But, but yeah. <laughs> I don't know if they're watching YouTube or not. But, but um, yeah, I mean, they, they're, we're headed right down that path again, man. They're going to try prohibition. And you think it was mm -hmm. bad with, with alcohol, try prohibiting firearms. Try banning firearms and see what mm -hmm. happens. Yeah. Uh, but that, 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 that... 3% that simply will not stand for it will make a mess of things. And I really don't want to see that happen. I don't want to see a civil war. I don't want to see us fighting literally with our government. I want to affect change through the political system that's in place. And I still do believe that we can do that. I think we're doing that right now. I mean, the fact that we can get in front of a camera, post a video to YouTube, and I, <laughs> I swear I, I'm going to have a hit taken out on me by some people in Congress because I'm having fans uh, email me saying, dude, I just called Carlos Cabello's uh, office and, and they like just hung up on me. <laughs> <laughs> I know so I... the phone calls and, just, and, and now you just get voicemail like in their D.C. office are not even taking your calls. Yeah, anymore. well, we switch, switch to their social media. Calls. That's what I say. Like, like the thing I would say about that, I posted those guys because you can find their social media. Easily. Yeah, that's why I you... everybody to post it. I wanted everybody to make a video and everybody to post it because yeah, that. It, 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 it was us collectively doing that, that we could organize that fast and make yeah. videos and make posts and, and everybody could you know, come together that fast through social media. And then we were blowing up their phone lines. And believe me, that scares them more than anything. And I want to speak about this too really quick because this is really important. Right now there's this petition going around and everybody signed a petition to stop the, uh, the, the bump fire stock bans. Guys, those petitions we found out are absolutely 100% worthless and a waste of time and energy. We had well more than the, the required 100,000 signatures yeah. to stop the Hughes Amendment, and yet we never got a response from the White House. So that is just something to keep you complacent. And it makes me angry when people are saying, hey, here's the link to the petition. Go sign it. And then people go sign it, and they think that's all they have to do. I signed the petition, so I did my job. No. So those petitions are a complete waste of time. Stop spreading the link. Yeah. You know it's what? Affordable. This is yeah get on the phone and call your congressman call them that's your first action call them because they their phone's ringing off the hook makes them mad 
and, and, and makes them listen. Then you go to email and faxes. Blow their, if you get their fax number, send them endless faxes saying, I oppose this legislation. You know, yeah, if you have a fax machine. I right. think this is a good thing to talk about. Um, and Lola wants get us to cover like, I, I, I think Lola wants us to cover what we can do. And I agree with what you're saying about um, this thing, but it's tough. Like if you tell your fans, you know, they're sharing it and for you to go, hey, that's totally useless. It's almost like trying to explain to people that when you go to a traffic light and there's a crosswalk you want to cross and there's that little button that you could press. <laughs> yeah. People think if you press that button, it changes the traffic lights. It doesn't do shit. <laughs> That's to pacify you. If it has a function, it serves yeah. to pacify you. In most cases, I, someone might have told you that it does something somewhere, and that may be true in like 1% of the cases. 99% yeah. of the time, that's just to pacify you while you're standing there. And yeah. and I think I agree with you that a lot of things like that are the same thing. It just pacifies you. They maybe know who you are and have some kind of database, and that's all well and good, but these people really need to hear from you. And if they shut down yeah. their phones, you can uh, email them. You can, they have social media and they're vain, just like the rest of us. So you can get on their social media and blast them. I put up a post last night and I listed their social media and I tagged them. And when yes. you see other people do it, repost what some other, like if you don't have the time to make up a social media post, repost what other people are doing. Please do, yeah, get everybody motivated. And, and here's what we faced right now. So under the Obama administration, everybody was scared of Obama. Right. They mm -hmm. were scared that he would sign any gun control bill that actually made it to the House of the Senate and wound up on his desk. But they're not afraid of Trump. And that's what scares me. Yeah. I've heard more people of the gun say, ah, even if they pass it through the, the House and the Senate, Trump won't sign it. Oh, my God. Really? <laughs> I mean, did you really just say that? Yeah. Really that naive? I think it's fun. I was like, what the hell just happened to you? I know. Camera? I remember on the computer. I'm like, oh, my God. I was trying to face palm. Uh -huh. and it's like people, <laughs> if it makes it to his desk, we're screwed because Trump is a businessman. Trump is a negotiator. He prides himself on that fact. If he thinks he can take it, what seems to be and what has been sold as a harmless bump fire stock bill, which is actually a sweeping gun ban and fire and, and, and sign this harmless bill to get Obamacare repealed or to get the tax reform he's looking for, he'll sign it in a frickin heartbeat. I think he would. I think he will. If you look at what's been going on, like why did he crack in that moment that we had this thing go down and the media was putting pressure on him? Because the media has been putting pressure on him this whole time. It's the reverse of what happened to Obama. When Obama was president, the media would hide shit that he did wrong. And in, in this case with Trump, I mean, you know, I mean, this is the truth of what's going on. They're yeah. engineering shit that he's doing wrong and everything that he does, they're amplifying it and putting tremendous amount of pressure on him. You know, and this is a person who's lived a lot of his life in the public light. So this means something to him. You know, that's why he cracked and opened the door. And then obviously I, I want to talk about like what happened with the NRA. I'm not trying to skip over that. So if you think he's gotten no wins, you know, at least Obama got Obamacare. Right. And, and, he, and Trump's trying to do something about it to the point that today he had to go sign executive orders that we all think like, what the hell is up with these executive orders? Now he's signing executive orders. Of course, the media thinks it's terrible when they thought it was great with Trump, but he's under that kind of pressure where he can't win. And he's the president and Republicans have the House and they have the Senate and, and they could pass a law tomorrow. They could pass any laws they want to tomorrow. They can get rid of Obamacare. They can roll back all this freaking Dude, gun control. They can do absolutely. anything and they won't do it. That's what's that's what's scary. First of all, I also want to say that I actually support Trump simply because he was the best of the two choices we had by far. And I want to see him be successful. But I can't put my trust blindly in anybody's hands. When it reaches the point where one person now gets to decide, there's a 50 50 chance they'll decide against what you believe. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want that bill to make it to his desk. We got to no. stop it. It, it, it can happen. There's oh, there's there's absolutely gun guys that I've talked to, that I've spoken to, died in the wool gun guys that are telling me over and over again, oh, there's, there's no way, like everyone always says there's going to be gun control. Never. Ha well, first of all, there, there's already it been a lot of gun control. People. <laughs> I remember standing at the gun counter and people going, oh, that'll never happen. They'll never. What the hell? How'd that happen? No shit. Yeah. I don't even cuss and I'm trying like not yeah. to cuss. We are our own worst enemy because apathy kills us. And that gets back to my point, thinking that Trump is going to save us. We don't want to get it to the point where we have to rely on him saving us. we got to get motivated. People are just going to sit around on their butts going, 
Oh, well, it'll never pass. And even if it does, Trump will, Trump will do something. No, but that's not true. Organize. Not. Get in front of your state capitals like we did post Sandy Hook, carrying a freaking rifle and saying, not one more inch. We're done. You vote for this. We're dragging you out in tar and feather. Well, I mean, just just to give people like real world stuff that they can look at. Paul Ryan, like this thing happened in Vegas. Nancy Pelosi came out and, and associated suppressors with this, which was total bullshit. Right. Um there's, if this guy had a suppressor, we were still going to hear him shooting, right? But she said, imagine what would have happened. And Paul oh, Ryan yeah, yeah. took um, took the SHARE Act off the table. Oh, yeah. Right? Well, that was, totally, that was totally calculated on her part because, you know, the, 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 the anti-gunners have been fighting the SHARE Act, which was a very good piece of legislation. They were fighting it the, the whole time. And as soon as this tragedy happened, Clinton got right in front of the camera and said, if he would have had a silencer, they never would have heard the gunfire. Woman, you've never been shot at. I, I want to put a camera down range. Th thank you for reminding me of this. I want to put a camera down range at 100 yards, and I'm going to shoot at it with a high power rifle. And I want you to hear what it sounds like when a bullet goes by. You most yeah. certainly can hear you being shot at. Yes. It's suppressed, and a suppressor doesn't completely silence the report of a rifle. They would have known they're. It, that would have made no difference. And she probably knows that, or maybe she doesn't. Maybe she's just that stupid because she doesn't know anything about guns. But that's just it. The anti-gunners never let a good tragedy go to waste. They but also they, but, step on the dead bodies and, and say, look at me, look at me, look at me. We need to ban everything under the sun. Look at this dead body. And right. it's just but, but, but here's the thing that should be scary to people who think that nothing's going to happen. That gave Paul Ryan cover to pull that off the table. I don't think he wanted to cover. He had to pull it because of pressure. I, I don't, I mean, Paul Ryan, to his credit, I mean, the guy screws up endlessly and I'm not a big fan of Paul Ryan, but, but he has said that as of right now, at least with HR 39999, nine, I don't know how many, four nines, uh, the, the bump fire stock bill, he's not going to allow it to the floor for a vote. It may go through the Senate, but presumably it'll kill the House. We can't trust that either, right? No, no these guys can make deals, man, in the middle of the exactly. night and when we're sleeping. Obamacare us. Yeah, exactly. There's some, like, we, we could be, like, people who don't, I, I, I don't understand, like, maybe people haven't been watching this. I've been living in America for 30 years. O overnight, these guys will get together, make a deal, and it will wind up on the president's desk, and there will be people in the White House. Remember, you know, the Republicans have stopped any reform of, of, of Obamacare. That's why Trump had to sign executive orders, right? And then who did he have in the White House? He had Democrats. So they, they, will, they will get something passed through somehow. It will get on his desk. People will go over there and go, look, We'll pull the media. The media will back off for a couple of months. We're going to give you a win. You know, maybe they'll offer him a win on something like tax reform or or um, Obamacare that they don't really give a shit about because in the end they're going to put stuff in the bill. Like Pelosi said, you got to pass the bill to see what's in it, and then he's right. going to go for that. If you don't believe he's going to go for that and get a win, he's already president. It doesn't matter if he gets a second term. He's already right. president. He's very wealthy, and he'll be better off in Trump Tower. And, and, and once he signs that bill, if it makes it to his desk, game over. The fight to repeal that, it'd be 10 times worse. It'll never happen. You'll stop. never repeal it. Right. Once, he, once that bill makes it into law, we're done. And we, we can't let it happen. That's why we got to motivate people. we yeah. got to get them out of the apathetic stages and get them into the motivated stages because the threat is extremely real, people. So there's no saving grace. If you sit on your butts and you do nothing, when everything that you love gets taken away, I don't want to hear, I don't know how this happened. I elected a Republican. No, you elected a turncoat. We have to fight. Liberty is not free, people. You have to fight for it because anybody in a position of power is your enemy. I have a very adversarial relationship with my government. I don't trust it as far as I can throw it. I love my country. I freaking hate my government. And it's my government that we're at odds. And this is a concept that people in Europe don't understand. I try to explain to them. They, they don't understand Americans' way of thinking. They don't understand that we have an adversarial relationship with our government. They don't understand that we don't trust them. That's why we have a Second Amendment. Because when they stop serving the people, it is our obligation, obligation, to remove them from power. Yeah. That's why we have a Second Amendment. It's not about hunting. It's not about sporting purposes. It's a very real reason that thing's there. And yeah. that's because but, when we lose our voice to speak, which is the First Amendment, when they take away our ability to speak and we no longer have a voice in government, 
Step two. Yeah. Well, you know what? Power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. Look at what happened in Hollywood with Harvey Weinstein. Weinstein. That's what happens when you give people power, man. Yeah. They get drunk on it, and they think that they're they're above everybody else. Yeah. I never yeah. want to be a politician. People say, ask me, why wouldn't I run for the board of the NRA, or why wouldn't? And we got to talk about the NRA. Um, why wouldn't I run for politics? I'm not a politician. If I ever ran for office, I would become what I despise: politicians. Um, the, I, the problem with that is we really need good people to go into these things. I mean, obviously, you know, it has to be a thing that you don't go into forever. And, and, and I don't know, maybe this is the way to segue into it. Hold on. Forge from Freedom just donate another 10 bucks. To man, this those chat. guys rock. Guys, <laughs> please go by ForgeFromFreedom.com and check out some of the, the stores there. Mr. Guns and Gear has a store. Hank has a store. Uh, who else has a store there? Um, you do. You have well, a store. I know, I'm not trying to promote yeah. myself. Um, oh, you know what? Yankee Marshall has a store. <laughs> Yankee Marshall has a store there. So, yeah. so, so anyway, those guys are yeah. 100%. And the reason I, I partnered up with them is because they're 100% uh, for our rights. Yeah, not they're gun guys. A company that's going to donate it to, you know, the campaign of some anti-gunner. So yeah. please. So the, um, and that helps us, too. If you buy a shirt, it really does help us out. Absolutely. And so here's what they have to say. They say most politicians are a breed you can't trust. And that's fine. We all learn to live with that. What's really dangerous, though, is people getting complacent and too trusting while giving away their lives. Absolutely. You know, I thought America was built on this whole thing of like, you know, rebelling against uh, the king in England and, you know, not having kings and queens and princes and uh, you know, and yet we turn right around and do it. We have dynasties. We have political yeah. dynasties. The Kennedys, the Bushes, the Clintons. It, it's it, we have political dynasties, and and we it, and that's what's so, that's what's so funny about people is they'll fight for freedom, and then when that generation dies, when freedom is handed to the next generation, they start squandering yeah. it. So here's a question. I need to really like probably hit some questions um, from people yeah, in the yeah, in the in the audience. Um, so I'm just this is not in any kind of partic particular order. You guys have to understand there's like a couple of hundred people in here right now. And the, I just want to answer this. Uh, uh, Steve Watson asked, "Have I yes to brown yell, brown elk? Right. Yes, people. I, I can't get into privileged information, but Pete Brownell is a no compromiser. Um, there's there's just, just trust me when I say Pete Brownell is not our problem. I, yeah. I, I do not, I do not support a, a, a boycott of Brownells.com. Pete Brownell is not our problem. He's our strongest ally in the NRA right now. Yeah. So if, please don't blame Pete for what others are doing. Okay. Right. If you, if anyone out, if you guys trust us, you know, um, I know I went to the, I went to this event recently, and um, I deal with the Brownells guys, and like Max said, we can't, we can't obviously talk for them. You know, they're a company. They're a big company. They have their own voice and stuff like that. And they have put out statements, but they were not ha just like how we were not happy with this. They were not. happy. They were livid. Yeah, I, I, I saw them at uh, Iraq veterans shoot and, and, and we had some dinner together and the, the Brownells guys are livid at the proposed legislation uh, and they're fighting it. So no Brownells, yeah. they are 100 percent died in the wool American patriots that are yes. no compromise. And, and when it comes to what happened, but else is ha what's happening within NRA. Absolutely. And when it comes to like the statement that the NRA put out, because that statement is a weird thing, right? There are some things in there that make sense, but then, then they also like put some things in there that's going to serve to work against them as we go forward. And so, they, they're not connected to that statement those guys put out, just if you guys want to No, no, Pete's out. not. Pete, Pete, Pete didn't, didn't have anything to do with that statement. Um, and I think it was a misstep. I, I understand the strategy that NRA was trying to do. What they were trying to do, I believe, is, is throw it over the fence, try to get it out of the legislators' hands because they know if it goes to a vote, there's a potential to lose. So they said, ATF, it's your job to, to, to you know, reevaluate this. We already know what the ATF's position yeah. is. They've ruled on it four times. Yeah. They've said, look, we can't change this. And, and under the Obama administration. Right. right. And that's what, so they threw it over the wall to the ATF to, to give cover in time, I believe, to the Republicans so we can mount a defense against this. Because let's face it, the tragedy that took place in Las Vegas is probably the worst tragedy of its kind anywhere in the world where a single gunman did that much damage. So the threat to our rights are real. And I, but where, where NRA miss, misstepped was saying, we believe that these, and I'm paraphrasing, these devices should be uh, subject to additional regulations. Right. And, wrong answer. Yeah. But then they went, then they went on air, then they went on air and put it on, you know, on the record on air from their mouths, video and audio saying that they don't believe people should modify their rifles. 
and the and the rate of fire of their rifles. That's that's and, and that's the flaw that they now see is that the bump stock doesn't change one damn thing about the rifle. I can shoot that rifle just as fast without a bump fire stock. It is an accessory. It does nothing. And the anti gunners even know that because this is their backdoor way into banning self loading guns, right? They're, if they can get this bump fire stock law passed that's open-ended that allows ATF to define how, what, what is the standard rate of fire for, for a semi-automatic? <laughs> What's the standard uh, rate of fire? However fast I can okay. pull that trigger. <laughs> right. And therefore, if you can't define a standard rate of fire, how in the hell do you define an accelerated rate of fire? That gun only fires as fast as you can pull the trigger, and I can pull that trigger pretty damn fast. I can yeah. bump fire it from the shoulder. I can bump fire it from the hip. Yeah, I so, believe Jerry Mitchellick should be the standard. You should, should go. Be, yeah, Jerry Mitchellick <laughs> should be registered. As That's a, the slowest a, you should go, device. is Jerry. Yeah, let me just do this real quick, Max. Scott Kimball just donated ten Thank bucks you, to Scott. us. Yeah, Rock thanks a lot, Scott. And here's what Scott has to say. He says aftermarket business will be affected. They donate to charities like breast cancer vets and so on call up these charities and let them know donations are going to be smaller because of hr 3999 good point yeah absolutely i mean you know this is an industry that is supposed to be protected by the second amendment these are people that are that are law-abiding people a valid industry in america and if if any kind of legislation like this goes through not only will you just kill the aftermarket industry, and that's, you know, with right now, this is a buyer's market, right? Because everyone went out and made AR-15s because they had the Hillary plan, and people don't right. want to, like, just go buy an AR-15, so people have been modifying their guns. That industry dies, and everyone becomes a criminal. Yeah. No, that's, that's the end game. If you pass an open-ended law like that, and that's why it's so short-sighted and irresponsible for people in social media to say, I'll just ban the stupid things. I don't own one. We don't need them. They don't understand the end game. They don't understand. They've never read the bill and they, they're not capable of critical thought, apparently, because that is the most asinine, retarded, stupid thing you could ever freaking say is like, oh, yeah, ban a device that increases the rate of fire when you can't even you can't even tell me what the standard rate of fire is. And I can do everything that stock does without the damn stock. So <laughs> they, basically, it's a ban so, on guns that load yeah. themselves. And it allows ATF to say, if you fire that gun over. 400 rounds per minute, which I can do, then you're a felon. You know, what are you gonna do? Chop my freaking finger off, serialize it, make me registered as a, you know, NFA item. Yeah. But that's what, that's what this open-ended law does. And people that say, just let them have it and let them pass it. You law, joke, but that's what they'll, that's what they'll do though. The you joke about that. You joke about that, but that's what they'll do. Who knows I what mean, they'll do. you well, know, I'm how the hell, how the hell do they even enforce this? How the hell do they even know? And by the way, notice like people always, here's a thing, here's an umbrella that people always try to hide under. And I want to get your take on this. It's people out there always go, yeah, but you know what? Even if it passes, I don't care because I've got my stuff already and it's all going to be grandfathered in. Yeah. It's like the machine gunners. I don't want the NFA to change because my collection will be worth nothing. You know what, guys? I had a machine gun collection back when I used to make a lot of money. And you know what? I sold them all because I want to get rid of the Hughes Amendment. I want to get rid of machine gun laws that, that make them illegal. And so it's, it, it, it's but so self-serving. But, but, but they're not going to grandfather this stuff in, though, Mac. That's the problem. Well, this like, stuff, no, if this law passes, your stuff is illegal. It, it, there is no grandfather clause. If, if, if you own this, pri this personal property, which is another constitutional right that apparently they can just run roughshod over, your, your access to, per, they're going to deprive you of your personal, of your property without due process. You're screwed. Turn it yeah. in or face five years to 10 years in prison. You're an instant felon because you have a wooden dowel rod that you stuck in a trigger guard because yeah. it's a device that increases the rate of fire, the ambiguous rate of fire. It is, it is asinine. And that's why we have any, anybody that's in social media, anybody that's in print, anybody that's in television, that's part of the gun community. If they're in support of any type of legislation, any type of legislation, Tell them they're wrong. Just like you've got to call your congressman, let your favorite social media guys know that we don't agree with you. Please stop saying that. This is why it's important. Go watch Max's video. You know, but yeah. it, it's like we, 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 we as a community, I, I don't want to call out any other YouTubers. We're all in this together. We're all, we all mean well. And please don't unsubscribe from people simply because you might disagree with one of their political views. But it's our responsibility to self-police and to police uh, the representatives that we send to Washington to represent us. So if somebody says something you don't agree with, let them know that, that you're not happy with their decision and explain it to them calmly, unlike I'm being in this video, and, right. and try to bring them around to being part of the solution versus part of the problem.
Yeah, because the thing is, is here, we really have to keep up the pressure. I don't know if people understand the urgency here. A lot of these guys are pushing things off till next year. Well, in next year, we're going to have an, uh, more elections, right? And so Congress or the Senate can all of a sudden flip, and then Democrats can have control of something or both things. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Midterms. You know? and, and that's what they're all running scared of right now. That's why you're seeing the Republican turncoats, because really, after such a horrific event, emotions run high. And so there's this transitional period, right? So th this is why the anti-gunners are so quick to, to strike when a tragedy happens. Literally the same day it happens, they're in front of the cameras calling for gun control. And they know, and the reason they do that, it's part of their strategy because when people are emotional, when you see people on TV dead and bleeding and running for cover, we're human. That hurts. It, it hurt me to watch that thinking those are my fellow Americans that, that are going through this. That hurts. And it's that yeah. emotion they want to capitalize on because in the heat of the moment when you're emotional, you'll make a decision you wouldn't otherwise make when you're thinking yeah. rash and not by emotion. Yeah. When, so, when, when, uh, when, when you think that someone's playing like 3D chess or whatever, these guys are playing fucking Game of Thrones. <laughs> they are. And they have a long – dude, some of the most patient – People in this world are gun grabbers because yes. they have an in, they have a long term strategy. I mean, they're playing a long game. That's the whole meaning of the Good word idea. progressives. Uh, let me just bring up this question real quick. We got to take some questions from people. Um, this is from the Archangel, and he's been supporting um, this particular hangout for a long time. He yes. wants to know. He wants to know from both of us what are, what are our stance on the NRA. So you want to take that first? Yeah, sure. I'll, so, I'll talk so, after you. So most of. Uh, most of my adult life, I've been anti-NRA because I don't believe in compromise. There's no such thing as a compromise when you're dealing with our Second Amendment rights. I would never compromise even if we did have real compromises. And let me explain that, first of all. A compromise means you give up something and you get something in return. That's compromising. What we've done throughout my entire adult life is just give away our rights. There's no compromise. We get nothing in return. We just keep giving up our rights. And so that's why I have a no compromise position. No gun law is reasonable. There's no such thing as a reasonable restriction. The Second Amendment is crystal freaking clear. Shall not be infringed. Google it. Look up the definition of infringement. It means nit. None. Zip. Nada. Nothing. Nothing. You cannot. Yeah. Yeah. You cannot <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> you leave it alone. And, and so I've always had a problem with the NRA in the past because they literally wrote the Gun Control Act in 1934. They literally wrote the Gun Control Act of 1968. I'm not saying they supported it, people. They frickin' wrote them, okay? Then in 1977, they had a revolution where the, the NRA was staunchly anti-gun. They threw them out, and then a new generation came in in 1977 that was more pro-gun. So, but then we started to see things like the Hughes Amendment. And I understand the strategy behind it because we didn't have line item veto back then. But we, we got the Firearms Owner Protection Act signed by Reagan, which was a good piece of legislation, minus the poison pill that the Democrats inserted at the last minute called the Hughes Amendment that took away machine guns. But NRA is, has had a history of negotiating and, and compromising. And there was a time when it almost seemed like they were willing to give up black rifles in favor of hunting rifles with you know standard wood stocks and whatnot. So my entire life, I've, I've never supported the NRA, or if I became a member, it was when they did something good, and then when they didn't do things right, I didn't pay my dues, and I would send them a note, which wound up in a trash can, I'm sure, saying this is why I'm not a member this year. Um, then fast forward to Pete Brownell. Uh, he, he came to me at the Thousand Man Shoot and sat down. Uh, NRA is well aware of me. And... Um, and they're not, they're not very happy with you either, I'm sure. ILA, and it's, 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 it's a four-letter word. Um, and he came to me and he said, you know, look, what are your promise? What are your problems with the NRA? Tell me what problems you've had in the past. And I laid it all on the table. Right. And at that point, it was not yet known that he would be the next president of the NRA. And he, he's like, all right, this is where I stand. And he went through and we agree 100% regarding a second amendment. It can be wrapped up in one sentence, no compromise. Pete Brownell is a no compromiser. And Based on that discussion, I said, Pete, if you become president and based on our conversation, you you become president, I start to see change within the NRA. I'll become a life member. I won't just become a member. I'll become a life member and I will support you. And that's at that point at NRAM this last year where I became a life member and I supported the NRA. I started actively recruiting for the NRA, but I was taking all the proceeds from that and giving it to Hero Hunt. I've never profited from my activism. 
And that's, I, that's how I came to support the NRA. I fully believed, maybe naively so, that Pete had more power than he really does. Okay, so Pete isn't, isn't the final decision maker, it turns out. But he, he told me that later at NRAM that, you know, look, you know, it, it, it's a multi-person organization and I might not always get my way. It's something it's I something like in Russia, more. you know, it's like with Putin. He, he oh. gives other people the main spot, but there's still control. Right. right. And so there couldn't have been a more horrific test of my loyalty to the NRA when Las Vegas happened. And immediately the NRA issues an absolutely stupid statement saying they were doing just to find in their statement saying that they believe the ATF should take a look at this. I'm fine with that because I know the ATF's position. They're not going to reclassify anything. I was fine with what they were doing right up until they said, we believe that these devices should be subject to additional regulations. Right then and there, you know, I, people sort of bombarded me. What do you think of this? What do you think of this? You're a big NRA supporter. You've been recruiting. And I said, guys, I, I, I'm pulling all support for NRA. I'm no longer actively recruiting. Don't follow the links. Don't join. I'm not going to not going to do it anymore. And I will never recruit for the NRA again. I, I ha unless something really, really big changes. Um, I'm not going to re recruit for them. Now, that's not, I have not renounced my lifetime membership. I want to affect change within the NRA by being inside. Uh, there are certain people in the NRA that absolutely hate my guts, and that's because I am very vocal and I have an audience. And they've put that out there in public NRA, record, right? They've right. put that out there. I've seen things. And there are other people within NRA that like working with me and other people in social media. It's not just me. There's, there's others, but I'm probably the biggest hothead and the no compromiser. I mean, you, if I see even a, a crack in your position in defending our rights, I'm calling you on it, brother. I'm going to, I'm going to do everything I can to punch you in the nose and bring you back to reality. Because <laughs> I hope you do. If it's me, I hope you right? do. Keep <laughs> it's me. like, I have no compromise there. I will not give one inch willingly. And if I see weakness, I pounce and I try to correct it. And, and NRA, I believe saw the flaw in their original statement. They've come out since saying they oppose any legislation regarding bump fire stocks or anything else. And so let's see what happens when this stuff gets tested in the halls of Congress. And if it ever makes it, God forbid, it makes it to the president's desk for signature. Let's see what NRA does. I'm still, that, that, that most recent statement from them gives me hope that they're in the fight and that they're gonna do right by us. But, you know, that's fine. I'm gonna stay an NRA member, but I, I can't, at this point, I can't, I can't actively recruit for them until I have a year or two under my belt of them to do. And that's fighting relentlessly with a no compromise position for our second amendment rights. So yeah. um, I'm still an NRA member. I'm still going to try to help steer it is what I can. I'm just one very, very, very small cog, but I'm a very loud one. Um, and I'll do what I can. So to, do you think, to, to do you think um, like before I say like where I'm at with, on, on the NRA, um, do you think, cause I know people have put, people like you and I and, and other folks out there in the category of being like Trojans within the NRA because- <laughs> That was they, that was Miriam Hammer. Yeah, the former yeah. president of the NRA and a lobbyist for him. She's a real piece of work. I can't stand that woman. And she's a compromiser. She came out and said, the NRA has never been for machine guns or bump fire stocks or anything like that. She's part of the Joaquin Jackson crowd. She's the five rounds of the magazines all you ever need yeah. crew. And she needs her butt thrown out on the curb. Yeah. She's a piece of work. So uh, here, let me let me propose right now we make a T-shirt because For Forge from Freedom gave us another ten bucks. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I am wound up. You're seeing the un unfiltered Mac right now. I mean, this this is what how I really. If you come to my shop and you stand around, you'll get an earful, man. Because I am. They probably people will probably walk away going, man, he's a bit of a radical. <laughs> no, this is this is real. You're driven by your passion. Um, yeah. So and that's a good thing. So Forge from Freedom says, please support Hank by liking and sharing this video. He's one of the best guys in the community and deserves all the support he can get. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. And then they say that Tim can be grumpy, but he ain't half bad either. <laughs> I am grumpy, man. You, you start encroaching on my liberties. I get real grumpy. And you have the right to be. And, What's that? And so here's the thing I would say, like, we should make a T-shirt that says NRA Trojans. <laughs> yeah, I should. You know, like, why should we, like, what I'm trying to say to you is I, I would take that as a badge of honor because well, isn't that what I'm we're trying to do? Minute. Absolutely. I'm here yeah. to, to hold you guys accountable for what you do. Absolutely. I'm proud to be a Trojan. 
Yeah. Well, that could be. <laughs> I just thought about that for a second. Wait a second. Are you being sponsored by condoms? Horse. I'm proud to be a Trojan horse. Like, yeah. Are you being... That would be a funny shirt, though. I'm proud to be a Trojan. <laughs> Okay. In, in so many ways, there's like so many ways yeah, right? that, that could be spinned and twisted into a lot of things. But, you know, I think so. That's the thing. I mean, like where I'm coming from is this. Um, so, like, you know, obviously I haven't been doing this as long as Mac, but I remember going back like five years. I've been in this for somewhere between four and a half and five years. So going back to about, I think, like five shot shows ago, whichever was the first one I went to, there was this meeting that the NRA had. I've said this many times. A meeting. NRA had this meeting at SHOT Show with some writers, and I don't know if there were any other, I don't know if there was any YouTube guys there, but I, I asked. Oh, probably not. No, I don't think so, because I, I think I remember asking you about that or, or talking to you about it, and you were like, no, I did, you, know, you, did, you didn't know anything about this. But yeah. when I asked the gun writers at the time that were there what this meeting was about, um, one of them told me that it was to control us, the YouTube gun guys. And that's what the NRA wanted to, you know, th that's why they were having this meeting, because between the NRA and um, the NSSF and the, the folks that put on SHOT Show and all that. Yeah, like, to go to. That's why I'm not going to SHOT yeah. Show. Those, those bastards came out in, in support of the legislation as well. I'm done with SHOT Show. I just needed a reason. Now I have it. They can see yeah. that the sun doesn't shine. Screw yeah, the, N the NSSF just came out um, and said something. So did um, Sammy, you know. Um, there's, there's like these people for a long time, we've been a problem for them, right? The, the, the social media folks, the people that they're like, how the hell are these people getting uh, a soapbox to stand on and being able right. to say whatever they, they want to and go the off script? Yep. They can't, yeah. they can't control the message. Hold on, before, before it scrolls off, uh, the range one, Amigos Amigos, um, donated 10 bucks to you, brother. And uh, he, he's asking, how do we get, with, uh, get rid of Wayne LaPierre and, uh, and the other weak people in there? Will not donating and letting them know uh, why help write Pete a letter. Any advice, um, guys? Really, the only thing that we can do is is uh, become voting members of the NRA. We need a groundswell of people to become voting members of the NRA, and that means giving them money. And I think for the most part, they do a good job. They they screwed up this time, but become a voting member, and then we need to elect a new board. We need to elect. There's a lot of board members that don't even show up for the meetings. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I love him. He's a great actor. I love that he's pro gun, but Tom Selleck rarely shows up. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? That's the that's the rumor. And so we need people that are passionate. We need Adam Kraut. Um, he's from Prince Law Firm. Adam's part of the Gun Collective, uh, a great legal mind and a strong Second Amendment supporter. If we can get Adam in there and we can slowly take over the board of directors by voting out the the uh, the uh, Joaquin Jacksons and stuff, then we can start to take control of it from the inside. We need another 1977 revolution where we throw out the old guard and we bring in a new face. Um, that's how we change, man. Yeah, there's I no totally agree with thing. that. Oh, there's no magic pill. It's going to be a long, hard fight, but I think it's a fight worth having. And that's why I'm staying a life member. I'm maintaining my voting rights. And that's why I'm going to go there and, and show up at NRAM until they have security escort me out of the building. I'm going to be wearing... Adam Kraut shirts, and I'm going to be doing everything I can to be a loud voice for change within the NRA. Um, and the only way you're going to change it, guys, is to be part of it. Um, but I also support groups like Gun Owners of America. They sent me an email today. Uh, they said they saw my video. They, they, they thanked me for my support, and they said that they have a no compromise stance, and they do. And if you guys want to give money to an organization that is no compromise and has a history of being no compromise, check out Gun Owners of America. Um, I may, I may recruit for them if there's a way to do that. Uh, I think we all, one way or the other, if it's SAF, Gun Owners of America, um, NRA, whoever you donate to, at least give some money to lobbyists. It's a dirty deal. Lobbyists are, you know, just as dirty as politicians, but it's part of the political game we have to play. And, and we need the NRA. We need the GOA. We need SAF out there because we can't walk into the halls of Congress and say, listen to me. This is what I have to say. We have to send lobbyists and representatives. And those are the people that would do it. But um, yeah. yeah. You know, I, I totally 100% agree with that. I'm putting right now a link for uh, Forge from Freedom in the thing. Um, hold on, let me try this again. Uh, Cause I think I'm the only one that could put in links. 
Oh, actually, actually, YouTube is blocking me from putting in links. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love YouTube. Yeah, they, it's they, blocking they, me. I'm the moderator of this damn thing. That's it's, awesome. And so, so you can at least live stream on YouTube. YouTube took that away from me. Yeah, it looks like they've just blocked. But by the way, they've been demonetizing all of any video that I have like this that says anything about gun control. They've yeah. been demonetizing it, and it looks like it looks like they we just all have changed Patreon accounts, guys. I mean, yeah. And, and please go over to Patreon and 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 support all the content creators you regularly watch that have pages over there. Um, and 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 if that means less for me, I'm fine with that, man. Spread it around. Give it to the other content creators you watch. Um, but guys, we to keep fighting to keep being able to produce videos. It's not inexpensive and, and it takes money to keep these things going. We have very expensive equipment we have to maintain and replace every couple of years. And it, we have to travel. We have to do all the stuff that incurs expenses. And we can't do that when, when YouTube yanks all of our money away. They're trying to make us go away, be taking away our, our money. And so we had to find other ways. And a lot of us have moved over to Patreon. And, um, and that's how you can directly support us. It's a crowdfund site. And in exchange for that, we give you guys stuff back. We, you know, Freedom Munitions, which reminds me, I got to do my giveaway. Now, Freedom Munitions allows me to give away a couple hundred bucks worth of ammo to two different, uh, to do two different patrons. We do special deals at Copper. I mean, if, if Hank wants to do a special deal, we'll do a oh, special deal for him. I would love it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and we're, you know, we've worked with Don uh, Such. Such. You know, we've gotten him some deals and, um, you know, Guns and Gear and anybody we catch on Patreon. I don't have a list, but I know Hank's on there now and, and others are coming over. Now, we're trying to help them. We're trying to help them incentivize our audience because that's what this is all about i'm an activist to the core man i want to help everybody but you can help us by going to forge from freedom and buying a t-shirt or swinging by and becoming a patreon and getting some behind the scenes information yeah. and stuff and, and if you if you guys don't know this like mac is not going to say it so i'm going to say it you know mac and other youtubers like like uh like mac um for example iraq veteran and those guys they're actually they're giving to other YouTubers in the Patreon thing. I know they you know they, they probably don't want to get into we're, it. We're doing it because we want to show solidarity, right? So when yeah. I find another gun YouTuber show up on Patreon, I automatically donate to their page. We have to show unity. We have to fight this together, man. We need each other. There's there's no islands. There's there's no Michael Jordans. Um, we have to fight as a team. We're, mm -hmm. we're only powerful if if we unify our voices and come together. Um, there, there's no one person that's the key to all this. It's all of us collectively, and we have to yeah. get on message and rally you guys, which are our soldiers. Um, and, and, you know, when we say, hey, call your congressman and do this and do that, if you guys would actually do that and, and, and you reach out to your folks and you get them doing it, it spreads like wildfire to the point where <laughs> they start hanging up on you because they're so sick of getting the phone calls. That means we're winning. Yeah. Um, and, and that's, that's what... That's what we're doing. Like, if you guys want to know, just to finish where I was going with that, um, I, I think that the way to deal with this, I'm not a life member. I give money to Lola and I do this every year. We do it on an individual basis, giving it to the NRA. Um, you know, maybe if it if it's gonna if it's something that's gonna give us more voting rights and things like that, I would I would consider becoming a life member. But I 100% agree with the Trojans thing that we we can change this from the inside versus like going on the outside and then because these because the NRA right now is the most powerful tool out there to fight gun control. And if we yeah, from five outside, million members, yeah, if we go on the outside, if if like if a hundred or a thousand of us or whatever or even a hundred thousand of us go on the outside, these guys are going to do a lot worse. If we're in there and we take over and we put people that we know and we can trust in those positions, we can change everything. And a good, a good illustration of this is anyone who went to the, to the uh, NRA annual meeting in Atlanta, when, um, when you guys had the panel uh, with the gun collective, was it, was that the gun collective panel? Yeah. 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 I was there. I was in the audience watching you guys. I, you guys have to see this. It was amazing <laughs> how many people turned up to this gun collective panel. And and remember when we were, well, I had like a vote for Adam shirt. Yeah. On. Yeah. They made They're you. Saying, <laughs> and they sent their attorney in and they said, there will be no campaigning at this event. Yes. And, oh, I know why. And then, I, then they just spread like, it was like the wave. At a, at yeah. A, but here's sports. something I, here's something I could tell you. I know why that happened. Oh, I do too. Yeah, I was standing there with a guy. I'm not going to get into it because I'm not trying to like bring people down or whatever. But I was standing with someone who is supporting someone else that was running. And when he saw that we all, including me, I had like, you know, uh, vote Crowder or I forgot. Vote what crowd was. buttons. Yeah. Yeah. Vote we had the crowd. buttons and stuff like that. And, and they saw what you were doing. That guy actually left and went and reported us. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so because but, and, but he came. Fun. 
It's huh? like he came in and, and, and yelled at us instead of just coming up and quietly saying, hey, guys, this isn't a political rally. Can you please not do that? No, he had to yell across the entire auditorium. Yeah. There will be no campaigning in here. Yeah. See, and I that... our response. Everybody goes, vote for Adam. Vote for Adam. <laughs> it was awesome. It's yeah. Like, see, <laughs> see, like the, the thing is, is like I left to go. I left to go vote. That's why I know that that guy went and reported us. And the reason why that guy came in, because he saw these massive crowds. And this all reminds me for a brief time. When I was in when I was uh, living in New York, I was briefly a Teamster. <laughs> and that's one of the that's one of the <laughs> worst. <laughs> huh? The Teamsters are gang now. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm just kidding, man. Well, you know, it reminds me of the Teamsters. Like there's things going on inside the NRA that reminds me of what happened with the Teamsters. So, yeah. Well, you, you get know, people in power, man. And, and, and like you said, power corrupts. Absolutely. Um, but we still have a voice. Union members can vote and NRA members can vote. So yeah. we, um, don't set the alarm, guys. <laughs> Uh-oh, they're locking you in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah. So, okay, thanks, man. Sorry, we're yeah. getting ready. The guys are leaving the shop, and I just don't want to set the alarm on me. Okay, do we have a little <laughs> bit more time, or do you need to go? No, I'm good, man. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, we, we probably need to show if, if you guys have any questions, because we've been I don't know if there's any more questions. Um, uh, me too on tube says Mac for president 2020. I will never run for office, guys. Thank you. I'm flattered, but I'm not a politician. Would you would you consider running for one of uh, for office within the NRA? No. No, it's not me. My, man, my, my job is 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 to, on the outside, uh, right? Yeah, my job is is to be that 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 vocal member that um keeps know. people honest <laughs> yeah i mean i just it, it's i have no desire to be in any office it's not what i want to do it's not my personality type and i would hate it so mm -hmm. but the, but there are good people that want to do it like adam and that's why i suppose uh, support adam kraut uh, he needs to be in there and we need more people like him and i want to work outside inside the nra but outside of the board of directors to to elect the right people yeah, I think we absolutely we need to be Trojans. That's why I don't want to just pull out. I know I could tell you right now, my brother Anonymous, um, you know, he pays like Hank for NRA board. There you go. 2019. <laughs> well, I, OK, I kind of agree with Mac on that, but, you know, it's the same kind of thing. Um, you know, my brother Anonymous pays five years at a time. And I could tell you he's really, really, really pissed off. Yeah, and a lot of us rightly so. Well, let's get mad. Let's make a change and let's continue on. Uh, completely abandoning the NRA, I don't think, is a sound strategy. Um, no, because it, because then these guys are going to win. They would have like, you know, they would have killed us off like a virus. You know, we're like the white blood cells inside of the NRA. And we need to activate right now and be very active and attack, you know, the sickness or the disease or whatever is inside of the system and clean this thing up in order to move forward. And, you know, I totally agree with what Max saying. There are other organizations, you know, and maybe we should help build up some of those organizations. I know that when the last time you were on, we talked about what happened at the NRA with, um, Omar, uh, the Scorpion King. Oh, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we talked about what happened, um, with, uh, like how they, you know, the NRA disinvited the U S uh, CCS, no, the U S C C S, USCCA? Wow, man. Real Cujo <laughs> just hooked you up, brother. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's been a big supporter. Real Cujo just gave us 30 bucks. He says, here's some Swiss cheese and bullets. Thank you, Real Cujo. Cujo I appreciate that. And you know what's, you know, what's like really humbling about that, Mac? That's from like a, um, you know, um, a retired uh, veteran, you know, like, That's on, awesome. yeah, on a, you know, limited income and all that kind of stuff and helping us out. So that's why I take this so seriously, man. There's no way I can have people supporting me the way they do and just let this shit happen. A, a guy, uh, Justin Smith, he says, we need more tees. Guys, we get, uh, I think Monday, I got some more shirts going up. You may have noticed I've started signing off my videos with six some for Tyrannus. If you don't know what it means, go Google it. Um, but it's, um, I have, I have some six some for Tyrannus shirts coming got some other shirts coming we're always trying to add more shirts for you guys and you'll see them on the channel and um, um, i'm gonna say it has something stuff. to do with sig semper tyrannus is kick the ass of the tyrants but i'm probably wrong hold on yeah some people might not like it because but it's actually virginia it's actually in their state flag yeah but, it's thus always to tyrants, tyrants. yeah and here and and then uh, that's what john wilkes booth shouted as he jumped from the uh 
the uh, the the box after assassinating President Lincoln. He said, you know, basically basically six up for Tyrannus, you know, and thus the tyrants, and that's how it became yeah. infamous. Uh, but it is on the state flag of Virginia, and I, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Tyrant, and let me let me just there. go ahead. No, I'm go just ahead. saying it's 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 a powerful statement. It's Latin, and I love it. So yeah, I always hit folks up with Civis Passum Parabellum. All right, tell everybody what so, that is. So, Sivis Passum Parabellum means if you seek peace, you must first prepare for war. I thought it was, because I know Parabellum yeah. is important. Yeah. Um, I'm, so, I'm glad Latin's really weak. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just know it. I barely I, speak English. <laughs> I just know it because I use it, and it's like people always ask me, oh, why do you say peace out? Are you, a, you, know, are you some kind of hippie or whatever? Um, no, I truly, I want peace, man. I want peace in the world. I want my children to be peaceful and have access to these things. You know, like we were talking about earlier that I, I don't, I, I'm the likelihood of me being able to get cool stuff. You should show that gun that you have, by the way, because I see Walter from Safety Harbor Firearms is joining us in the chat from Knob Creek. I'm going to lock it on you. And who, uh, Walt who knows what this is? Walter should know what this is. And he's, he's from, uh, he's coming in from Knob Creek. He sponsors my channel, just so everyone knows, but he lets me say all the shit that I do. It's totally fine with it. Otherwise, you know. Anybody, anybody know what this is? Okay, who, who knows what this is? Walter, come on, don't let me down, Walter. Tell us what this is. Can, if you turn it around, are you giving it away? No. Oh, okay. I definitely. Same on both sides because it ejects out the top. Okay, Walter <laughs> says nice, but that's not what it is. It, it is nice. <laughs> it, it, yes, it's nice. <laughs> But that's not the uh, – now everyone's calling on Walter to name what it is. <laughs> it's not a C-96 Mauser, guys, but it is also a World War One era pistol. Okay. Yeah, it's not a P-38. Not a P-38. Not a it's Grand World War One. It should I, – I, is this in Battlefield 1? He said Han Solos. Is it Han Solos? It looks like a solo blaster, but that was a C-96 Mauser. It's a Glock 19 Gen 4. It's a World War One. Glock 19 <laughs> a Luger. Someone put Luger <laughs> in No, not Luger. Same period, though, guys. Same period. Come on, someone! If someone gets this, it's a hard we'll, one, guys. I mean, this this is this is one of those rare ones, but there, it's it's a really cool piece of history. Astra? No, not an Astra. Man chiller? Man, man liquor? Yeah. Man liquor? <laughs> man liquor? I mean, what the hell? Man Did someone just trick me into saying that? No, man liquor's a thing, man. Man's oh. a thing. Broom handle? No, it's not a broom it looks handle. Looks like a broom handle. Bergman. There we go. Oh, who got it? Who got it? Um, Moritz. Strong. Yeah, it's a Bergman Bayard. It, it, it is, but people just call it a Bergman. It's nine millimeter Largo as it's chambering or nine millimeter Bergman. So, so um, can oh, we, got got it. Can, job, we hook, can we hook Moritz up with something? Can we I'll um, get his address. I'll, <laughs> I'll send him some swag, man. If yeah, absolutely. Give your address to Lola Moritz and uh, and we'll pass that on to Mac and he'll send you some stuff and we'll send you some stuff, too, for getting that. So that's your absolutely. Do you have any of it? You know, we're, we're already Wait, here in the zone. Walter a, said it first. have to scroll back. Somebody said Walter said it first. Walter? Yeah, scroll back and see, see who's, who said it first. Okay, he says he cheated, so I'm, I'm scrolling back, but I can see where he said. Okay, he did say Bergman, but he said he cheated. He's in Knob Creek. Oh. So, <laughs> and, and Walter sponsors the channel, so Walter, oh, yeah, well, you, we you're disqualified. Yeah, we got to give it to a, a viewer. Yeah, we're giving Not it. Sponsor. Yeah, we're giving it to the guy that we claim. I think his name, uh, Marit Sprung. We're giving it yep. to you. Let me scroll back. Bergman. Yeah, yeah. Marit's got it. He got it. So here, here's. You know, I don't know if you have some other stuff. I'm gonna take this out. Let's see if anyone recognizes what this is. This is this no, is something Jordan. new. No, Jordan Horse. You, you, know, you can tell by the. Uh, you can, tell the, you can no, probably. <laughs> Who? Jordan Horst. Okay, so Lola said that Jordan Hortz also said Bergman. So listen, both of you, both of you guys will get it. Yeah, yeah, both of you guys, give us your info, and we'll send you like you know, we'll uh, we'll definitely we'll, we'll get send you some you cool stuff. stuff. Yeah, and uh, Ryan Kosia just um, or Kochia, Ryan Kochia just gave us ten ten bucks. Ryan, thank you for supporting Hank. It's awesome. Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you. I appreciate it. So, yeah, so, okay, so everyone knows what this is, but um, this is like, this is my first Daniel Defense, Mac. I don't know. They make you... a nice rifle, man. Sadly, because of the, the, uh, the market, they had to do a big layoff, but uh, yeah. 
they're building a new facility, but Daniel's defense makes a great rifle. Yeah, and this is the ISR, by the way, so it's integrally suppressed. That's awesome. Integrally. The, integrally. <laughs> integrally, excuse me. <laughs> oh, dude, I told you that because people beat me up, man. I mispronounce things all yeah. the time. And like, um, you did that on purpose just because you want to, you're trolling the trolls or you're really screwing it up? Yeah. I'm like, no, I'm really screwing it up. <laughs> no, I just, just blame it on my British accent. That's all. So there you go. I mean, this is my, like, this is my, uh, my first Daniel defense. It's also integrally. There you go. Integrally suppressed. I, I, I'm with you. Uh, somebody, somebody said, uh, yeah. Yeah, Joe, uh, Joe says I'm a BCM guy, but I do like DDs. I'm a BCM guy too. That's, uh, that's my preferred rifle, but I, okay. I, I can acknowledge a fine piece of hardware when I see it, and DD makes an outstanding, uh, outstanding piece of equipment. Yeah, absolutely. And I've got like a primary arms 300 blackout scope on here. You By know the what? Way primary arms is probably one of the best deals in terms of red dot sights and magnified yeah. optics. I love their stuff. Um, yeah. The AC, the ACSS is built for knuckleheads like me. <laughs> yeah, no, me too. It's, uh, <laughs> I don't have to do much hand. thinking. <laughs> You know, um, I don't I don't have to do much thinking with it. And by the way, guys, in the link in the description of this video, I have a bunch of links to several um, primary arm scopes. And if you guys click on those links, you can actually get uh, and if you buy it, it takes you to uh, primary arms and you can buy those scopes that are in there. If you're interested, if you're looking and guess what happens, you get either you get free shipping for sure. And then you get either the mount or the rings that goes along with those scopes for free. It's an affiliate link, so it does help, you know, it does help support my channel and all that. So if you guys do that, you know, it helps me out, full disclosure and all that kind of stuff. And another 10 bucks, man. Yeah, from T. Dinkle, 1987. Man, these guys are making it rain. Okay, okay, oh, low light. <laughs> low light, very cool. Guys, you rock. Thank you yeah. for supporting Hank, that, that, that's awesome. Yeah, that's pretty cool, thanks guys. These guys are making it rain. They're making like a thunderstorm up in here. <laughs> And YouTube told me I can't live stream, so I'll never see any of that Google goo money. Wait, hold on a second. They stopped your live stream? Yeah, they yanked my live stream capabilities. That's all part of me getting my hand slapped for daring to put a bump fire stock video up. Wow. Is that permanent? I think it goes away after a few months, but I'm going to keep doing the videos because I'm, I'm just, I'm a little rebel, I guess. I'm going yeah. to bump fire from the shoulder and I'm going to do a bump fire video without a bump fire stock and, and see if I can get my hand slapped for that one. Wow. Okay. So there was a question here. It says um, from Run G19, um, question, can you add a BFG to it, to AR firearm, not a pistol with an AOL 26 and a half inches from threads to buffer? FYI, I got a shock, shock weight brace. So can, they, can he put a BFG? To a a firearm. Firearm. So, you know what, guys, you're, 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 there, there are conflicting letters out there on that stuff. Most people say if it's, you know, uh, over a certain length, it's okay. Um, I'm not an attorney, so I don't want to give legal advice on what the ATF will, will or won't nail you for. I'm not an expert on the subject, so I don't know. I don't put, yeah. I don't put vertical grips on anything that isn't a rifle or an SBR just because I'm high profile. And, um, yeah, you know. They're always looking to get us for something, so I'm, I'm just real careful with that stuff. Yeah, Tony Tony London wants to know how much this is. Um, this is about three grand. Man, so, you're rolling in the goo goo money. Uh, well, what I did was traded guns. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, guns and other stuff went for this. So just so you Omar guys know. Omar is so proud of what he's done here. I got I got to give Omar a few minutes. Oh yeah, let's um, see. No, Omar's got something awesome. And actually, first, Mac, you read this next thing that popped up. So, because folks are okay. yeah. from Dylan Straub. Yeah. Uh, those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. I, wasn't that Ben Franklin? Um, it was one of the founding uh -huh. fathers that said something similar. But it's true. Uh, you can't. Was it Thomas Jefferson? Was it Jefferson? Okay. But yeah, it's um, guys. There is there is no such thing as as trading um, liberty for security. It, it's 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 a it, it's a fool's errand. It's a fool's game. It, you will not get liberty, or you will not achieve security by surrendering your freedoms. Never trust a government. You know the old saying. I'm I'm from the government. I'm here to help. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, 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 by the way, Archangel wants me to tell you that you can do a live cast on here and double expose. I've never heard of double expose, but uh, um, okay. And then Mr. Some Guns, man, just hit you up. Mac and Hank, you guys uh, grade the NRA board members like the NRA does on politicians so we know who. It, you know, that's not a bad idea. 
Um, yeah, I think I think um, you know what? I'll you work should with set Adam that up. Yeah, because I need some insight into the board. Um, I'm not sure where a lot of them stand. I know where the Joaquin Jacksons and those yeah. screwballs stand, but uh, that might be a good thing for us to do. Thank Absolutely. You. Yes, that is a good idea. Um, a great idea. Blazing twelve twelve says um, he spoke. Con Congressman Cabello told me today that HR thirty nine ninety nine does not infringe on our Second Amendment, and he will. And he was kind of a dick about it. I told him I so strongly disagreed and and urged him to rethink it. Okay, thank you for doing that. You know, you yeah, spoke to him. Guys. And that's, yeah. that's you know what this is how we change their minds when they start to realize they may get kicked out of their seat of power if they go forward, um, mm -hmm. they'll change their minds. And we can change their minds. And all it takes is you guys blowing up their phone lines. Um, but we'll see. Uh, he, he's, a, he's a congressman in the very southern district of, of Florida, like down south of Miami, um, Gator Territory and all the Keys. I believe that's who he represents. Um, yeah. yeah. If you ever want to do, if you ever want to do a live thing, Mac, I will always be happy to set something up for you, and you know, and you can do your thing. So you know, well, I just, do, I'll just do it with you, brother. I, I mean, I, I love working with other tubers because you know we we are all in this together. And yeah. So, not about well, I, I appreciate it, man. For people who don't know, like Mac, I always tell people this story. But Mac, when um, when I started this years ago, like I, like I said, like four and a half, five years ago, I met Mac. I had like three hundred subscribers, and I <laughs> cut him off at the bullpup shoot in Kentucky. And um, <laughs> I remember this vividly. I, and I remember saying, hey, do, do you and Lola want to grab dinner with us? And yes, you're like, what? Yeah. I'm like, dude, I'm just a guy and I'm hungry. You want to have dinner with me and my wife, you and your wife? And, and you just simply couldn't believe that I would, you know, have no, you were awesome. You were awesome. And you guy. Guy. Yeah. Um, and you told me that you would support me and you have. And, you know, I think that's great. I just want I, I want people to know that. So we're, we're um, all in this together. I don't care if you have 100 subscribers or five million. We're all in this together. It's not whose wiener's bigger than whose. It's about coming together and fighting and having a unified front. And I, I, I never judge people by their subscribers. What I think uh, they say. But, you know, it's, 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 it's like all I care is if you share my values and you believe it's I believe and you're no compromiser and you're all for liberty and freedom, then have dinner with me. I'll take anybody to dinner. Yeah. True passion. OK, there was one more. There's one more thing here. I'll read that. I'll read this one. Um, uh, this is from MPEG 1740. He said uh, he gave us 10 bucks. He says, see this pass him. Parabellum. See this pass him. Parabellum. Sending a little help your way. And then uh, there's another one. I'll second that cheat sheet to uh, to see who needs to go at the NRA board would really be helpful. So thank you guys for donating to Hank. That's awesome. Yeah, and, that's and, yeah, we'll look forever. Into that. I will. Uh, I'll see what I can do because yes. that's all I've been doing man, for the for the, like. What have I been doing? I've been like running around crazy, just doing political stuff for the last. Yeah. Year. Get some sleep first before you do this. <laughs> let's see what let's see what Omar has because I want Omar always. Well, has Omar, some Omar, well, not okay. He's yeah. the Scorpion King, so he has to show you the Scorpion. First. Okay. So someone that's asked about a Scorpion T-shirt or something. Yes. Here we go. This oh my God! Perfect. This is set. okay. You we, do. we painted that that uh, that flat dark earth. That's a copper paint job. And there's the yeah. tri lug mount. So okay. You know what's another thing that you should do, Mac? You should make an award for um, like best guns on the internet or best guns on YouTube <laughs> or something like that. And yeah. that is a sexy. That's a sexy scorpion. I think that's probably the sexiest one I've seen. Nice he, compact package. He, he, he loves a scorpion. Now show he, us what, wait, wait, where's he going with it? We haven't fully seen oh, this oh. thing, man. This is gun porn. You <laughs> don't end work. the gun porn so easily. <laughs> Surefire light. One, 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 one of the guys asked again. what you think of MROs. We yeah, come on, show it again. Let's see. Okay. See, it's a Trigicon MRO. Okay, is that, um? so so what's your grip from, your pistol grip? This is a, a Yeti Works switchback grip. Oh, cool. Yeah, okay. Yeah, those Yeti Works grips are a huge improvement over the standard factory grip. Yeah. Okay. And I have a pending Form 1, so I'll be able to put the stock on soon. It has an SB Tactical side folding brace. Soon right. to be oh, yeah, yeah, turn it around a little bit. Okay, so that's SB Tactical. Okay. Yep. In fact, fun fact, Tim let me borrow this, so this is his. That was, that was from mine when I was waiting for my Form 1, but mine's now oh. SBR. So, and then where's the trigger yeah. from? It is an HP Industries trigger. Uh, HP oh. Industries makes a lot of components for the Scorpion. They they do a lot of good stuff. Yeah, they 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 make a lot of really high quality stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. And then uh, okay, Hank, very cool. Since you were, 
Since you were showing off your 300 blackout, Hank, I oh boy. just did a... Oh, boy. I just did a, yeah, look at this. It almost been running around the shop like the last three days. Like, look, look, as he's getting parts in and putting yeah. together. He's got uh -oh. the I, don't, I almost don't want to see this. It, it's okay, pretty good looking. Okay, right. go ahead. So, as it stands, this rifle weighs four and a half pounds with a suppressor and optic. I don't have the optic here uh, right now, though. So Four and a half? So, wow. Silencer Co. Mega 9K with a BCM 9-inch barrel, Midwest uh, Industries rail. Wow. Battle Arms receiver set and a SP Tactical uh, PDW stock. Or wow. PDW brace, sorry. And uh, Geisley Super Dynamic trigger. Nice. And, uh, some more cool stuff there. What's, what's cool is, uh, you know, we have Chase from Definitive Arms here in-house with us. And, um, right. Uh, on the battle arms upper receiver, you know, they put this, these lightning cuts here on the pick rail. So my Midwest Industries rail did not match, but he was able to cut it on some of his machinery to make it match. Oh, cool. Okay. So that's something that we can do in-house. Yeah, Mac, I get a lot of questions about um, definitive arms. So I would probably get my brother's probably going to, like, you know, give me a lot of problems if I don't ask you about that. Because, you know, I know you guys did some stuff and you, you've got things coming out, so... Yeah, so, I mean, long story short, uh, the folks from Definitive Arms Chase and his crew moved up from sunny Florida, and they're about to experience their first. Uh, <laughs> uh, Good luck with that. Enter. Yeah, uh, they moved up from Florida, and, um, and we're, we're working with them, and uh, we're co-located here in our facilities, and we're working on some really cool stuff. Uh, Definitive Arms is getting settled in. Uh, we're, we're installing some additional uh, refinishing equipment, and so we'll be able to do Cerakote, we'll be able to do bluing, we'll be able to do all sorts of crazy stuff. And um, of course, they're known for their, uh, for, the, for their AK work, but we're also bringing out some parts to do that, that Ruger Charger uh, brace system. That was one of our little prototype, you know, the tester manufacturing capabilities out products. And it went really, really well. We sold them out a lot quicker than we thought we would. Um, and so we're going to be getting into small parts manufacturing and we're going to be doing firearms. We're going to be doing all sorts of cool stuff. Um, now that we've partnered up, we have a lot more resources available to us and we're going to hopefully, you know, bring out some really, really cool stuff in 2018. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. And I think you guys already had some things that came out. I know my brother, there was something my brother was trying to, yeah, the um, Ruger, the, we did the charger pistol we, we made yes. a break for it and uh, we okay. got more coming in. We, we, we did a run of them and you know, we just wanted to, it was basically a test of our manufacturing capabilities and we wanted to see, you know, what, what, what was the, you know, basically a time study is what they call it. So you can figure out, you know, time, parts, materials, how much time goes into planning, engineering, design, manufacturing, anodizing, packaging. And, um, and so we sold them. We thought it'd be a cool little project to start off. And uh, it, it was actually extremely popular. Uh, really yeah. contacted us. They're interested in them. And, okay. uh, and so, yeah, but we have more coming. We were just overwhelmed by the volume of orders. And yeah. so. Uh, can, I can I reserve yeah, two? Can I reserve two? <laughs> yeah, we'll have plenty. If you want a couple, just let me know. Yeah, okay. absolutely. I will it's do. It's really cool. It turns an otherwise slightly awkward pistol into a really freaking cool little gun. Yeah, because I'm telling you, my brother's trying to call me right now. <laughs> I'm not. Tom will get him one. Your brother, okay. your brother's got the hookup. Okay, cool. Um, one more shout out to Low Light. He gave us twenty bucks. More cheddar. Thank you. That's amazing. Low light rock, brother. Yeah, I'm I'm humbled by this. You know, we're gonna have to put Mac on here like once a week or something like that. So, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'll hang okay. out as much as you want, except for my wife. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because she's when, when, kids, and I feel sorry for her. <laughs> well, that day when I cut you off, you you and your wife were going into the hotel, and we were like talking so much. She eventually was like, "Okay, I know where this is going." <laughs> 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 so she's you know that woman has been suffering for a long time. Does Omar she's have enough? Without her, I couldn't. I couldn't make it, man. She she Absolutely. is uh, she is the best thing that ever happened to me, and I got three wonderful children because of her. Yeah. Now, does Omar have another gun? I think Omar's done. No, I'm don't done. don't oh. don't don't spur Omar on. Don't get him started. Okay. Because I mean, he did he did he did some pretty cool badassery, but you know, I just want to show one more thing. It's not it's nothing awesome like what Omar has going, but I do want it to be a project. So I don't know if you guys know what this is. It's an AR. Uh, it's just Obviously, an it's an AR. So here's the thing. Um, I don't know if I can. Let me see if I can show you guys. Where is this? Okay. So if you look here, that's what it is. It's a Defiance. And this is actually from Chris. That makes the Chris Vector. Oh, really? Yes. And this is a 22 LR aluminum. So it feels like it has AR weight. 22 LR 
AR, you know, works everything like an AR. The upper, I could take this upper off and put uh, put this upper on another on an AR lower. Gotcha. So you can change everything. You can change well, your stock. Well, how's the magazine well work then? Let me see the magazine. Um, so here's the magazine well right there. And oh, it's so it a, just locks in like a standard. And then yeah. You, and and here's, oh, the mag here's the magazine they give you, which is compatible. There's other magazines like this. Gotcha. That you know. Yeah. So here's the really cool thing about this, Mac. Um, this barrel is a 1022 barrel. Get out of here so you can change it pretty easily. Yes. So you, I, they don't guarantee that it works with every 1022 barrel. And if you look, you'll see here, this is how you can take the handguard yeah. off and all that. Um, so you can change this and put a integrally suppressed <laughs> 1022 barrel, which is available. Right. I think that's the future of this. If everything didn't go crazy with um, like, you know, like everyone thought that, that our suppressors are going to come off the NFA and then the market died and, and all that. If that didn't happen, we would be seeing a lot more integrally suppressed barrels out there. But I got this as a project because now you can change all this up, right? You could, if you're allowed legally, if um, this <laughs> got, HB. Got to throw that, that, that caveat in there in case. <laughs> yeah, for the future. ATF. Yeah, but you can change all these things. You can change trigger, you can change your pistol grip, you know. You can do all that good stuff in here because um, they went to the extra trouble of making this upper except uh, 1022 barrels. So that's pretty cool. That, that's a yeah. little bit. I like different. I really like. Yeah. That. Yeah, me too. You know, that's what I look for. You know, when I go to SHOT Show, I'm really um, looking for the things that are different. And I think like we were saying before, man, if like what I don't think people understand, the people who are out there saying that they were OK with creating regulations regarding people modifying guns, specifically nope. rifles, is that's the biggest part of the market. Yeah. You know, it's if we could be as tasteless as the anti-gunners are, you know, I could make a video and, and show, and this would be truly tasteless, but, you know, if, if I were to, to make a video showing mm -hmm. me shooting at 200 yards of the bump fire stock at a target versus me taking aim shots, how quickly I could make um, hits, at, it would drive the point home that rapid fire isn't as lethal as people think it is in terms of just general usage of a firearm. Now, this lunatic positioned himself, you know, right over a crowd of 22,000 people. In my opinion, uh, of course, he's culpable, but what in the world was going through Las Vegas PD's mind not having snipers positioned around that concert you go to a football game the local police departments have snipers at all those football games in case somebody does something they can take them out why in the world didn't vpd have snipers and security placed all around that venue in this age of terrorism why in the world weren't they had didn't they have counter snipers deployed that's my question and but, um you know what? And, and i it like i mean obviously that's something that they can answer better than us i do know um I do know someone who is not, he's not on uh, Las Vegas police department, but you know, he's, he's there. He's, he's a police officer in law enforcement and they have special units and things like that. But I think that those units are overtaxed in Las Vegas and they're not like, I for know example, Could yeah, you but, stop in Vegas, man, the, the stuff they have to put up with people come from all around the world just to get drunk and do stupid stuff. Yeah. I, I don't, I mean, I don't yeah. want to be too hard on the BPD. Um, but I really am wondering why in the world. I mean, well, he told me reporting he, event. They have snipers there, and if they could, they would have quickly identified that threat and taken it out. Yeah, um, things would well, be quite different. But here's the thing: like he told me, his unit there. I think they're more like, um, you know, what? I don't want to give away too much, too many details about his unit, to be honest with you. But uh, and you and you actually know who I'm talking about. But he told me that people are leaving because they're not paying these guys and these guys are training. So for example, what was it? The Rio that they just recently took down. Yeah. Um, you know, before they took that down, these, his unit with all their units were training inside the, the Rio, you know, doing like actual live fire training and stuff like that. But what's happening is that they're so stressed and they're not paying these guys properly. And then guys are leaving and they're not replacing them. So that sucks because a town that size, Las Vegas, if there's ever a town that needs a solid police force, it's that town, man. Like yeah. I said, people come from all over the world just to do engage in the complete debauchery. And I wouldn't want to be a cop on that department. That has to be a nightmare. Yeah, um, it's a massive. So, yeah. So, really, I mean, people, someone needs – and by the way, the person who I'm talking about, they lost the, – the police officer that died there was one of their guys. So, Man, that sucks. You know, um, yeah. So – 
Yes, they do have to, like, it, it is dangerous. Everyone's coming from around the world, a lot of money, lots of people, all condensed into this one little tiny, you know, footprint area, and then they're having all these big shows. They should do something about it. Um, Joshua Hooks, by the way, gave us 10 bucks, and he wants to know, uh, hold on, let me click his question. He says, Mac, when will Copper Custom be able to re-blue? I live in Indiana oh. and will need some work on an old 870. So the blue tanks are under construction right now. We have, uh, we're building a housing and a ventilation system for it. Uh, a lot of steam is generated when you're doing bluing. And um, we should have that up and running in the next couple of weeks. But um, you can come by the shop and anybody wants to see what we're doing. I, I'll give them a tour we're at and what we're up yeah. to. And I need to, I need to stop by all this. I need to stop by the shop. I think all this money that I'm getting in this chat, I need to uh, use this money. Use gas to get, that, get that charger up here. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. You have a challenger, right? Yeah, I have a challenger, but I also have a rebel now. Oh, no. I you have need, a rebel. You need to drive a Jeep, man. Huh? You need to drive a Jeep. I, okay, so we're gonna let's talk cars here a little bit. I, I do want to get a Jeep. The problem is, I, I heard that they were they're, they're uh, redoing the Jeep. So new Jeeps are coming out. There's always a new car coming out, man. Yeah. Just no, but I want the new ones. I want. I was gonna buy a Jeep, and when I looked, there wasn't just a, a, like as much room as I wanted. And I think it's coming out, and they're making them longer. But also, they're gonna. Um, you're gonna have a diesel option by the end of next year. That's pretty cool. A diesel, yeah. if it's a lot of torque. If it's not a weenie motor. They they went. Yeah. They went. Through oh, it's gonna be couple. more horsepower than the other than the other things in the line. Cool. That that sounds yeah. awesome. I'm I'm yeah. stuck with this Jeep, man. I'm gonna have to drive it till the wheels fall off. I um. Yeah, your Jeep's pretty sexy. I don't know if you notice, but whenever I see it, I take pictures. I lift it all up and everything, and then, then uh, how, how are the kids getting up and down? And all my money went away. What's that? I said, how are your how are your kids gonna get up and down? Oh, you're gonna put it on airbags? No, no, no. I'm probably not gonna do much to it at all right now. I, maybe, oh. maybe on my next Jeep. I I, the, 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 I, uh, I just need to drive this one until I can't drive it no more because I yeah. need to need to save up the money. Well, the reason why I got a Rebel, I don't know if you're aware of the uh, Ram Rebel, but it um, it's a pickup truck, and I really needed a pickup truck. Yeah, I could use a truck myself, man. The Jeep's yeah. awesome, and it's always uh, – it's it's a, you got another donation. Yeah, Let's go ahead. You get that off. one. You get that one. Hank and Tim, thank you both for what you do. Thank you for watching us and supporting us, guys. We couldn't do what we do without your support. Um, that's why we have a storefront. We keep a storefront open because we love fans coming in. And yes, I'm here when I'm not out filming. Even if I'm off having lunch and a fan comes in, the guys at the shop know to call me and they say, hey, there's a fan. I say, give me 15 minutes. And I come back to the shop just so I can shake their hand and give them a pat yeah. and thank them for their support. Without you guys, we have nothing. Um, so, so yeah, thanks Blazing 1212. Okay, I, I'm gonna wrap this up because we can't keep Tim here. I know some people are asking us like about other people. Honestly, I mean, I, I know that I've done some of that. I've talked about people. I don't wanna keep going there with that. And I don't think Mac wants to either. I think I agree with Mac and other folks. Um, we had VSO on last night. At this point, we're like faced with a real danger right now. And we have, you know, everyone coming after us. We have to somehow get together, get over our shit. And and fight the the uh, the laws that are coming at us out there. I think that's more important right now. So I don't know what you want to say about that, Mac. I'll let you you know. Yeah, guys. I mean, if I can say one thing in closing, it's um, it, it's please stay vigilant. Don't be lulled into thinking that your Republicans are going to save you. Um, just because we don't have an Obama administration doesn't mean that we're safe from gun laws. We are far from safe, and we've just seen the tip of the iceberg. Uh, we're fighting this HR 39999 bill, but there's already been a ban for ammunition introduced. There's, there's a magazine ban, and I guarantee you Dianne Feinstein is working on an assault weapons ban. And the dangerous part is they can make a compelling case to the masses that we really don't need 30 round, 60 round, 90 or 100 round magazines. And we could see that slip through very easily. We could see this seemingly harmless bump fire stock ban slip through very easily that really is a Trojan horse that would open the door for the ATF to completely do away with self-loading firearms. So remain vigilant, please. I know it's hard to do, but make those phone calls, send those emails, send those faxes. And until the threat is gone, please people stay active. And when we say there's a new bill, here's who you need to contact, please do it because 
that's the only way we're going to maintain our freedom. Absolutely. I 100 percent agree with everything that Mac just said. I mean, you know, we have to just keep pushing here and let these guys keep hearing from us. You know, it, it, it is going to make a difference. Right. I really believe it's. Oh, they are making a difference, man. Yeah. The, uh, the, the folks watching and, and, and other folks are are beating these politicians up, man. They're starting to realize, uh oh, maybe we shouldn't be doing this. We can stop these bills before they even get introduced simply by making our voices heard. If we could get everybody to organize, to show up at their state capitals in a couple of weeks and stand outside the capitals with picket signs saying no more gun laws, uh, just like we did after Sandy Hook, we could stop all this legislation cold in its tracks, just like we did last time. Uh, but let's see what happens with the bills that are introduced. Let's see what makes it out of committee. And we're going to have to pick our battles because we're going to raise the alarm so many times and people to stop listening. We're going to find those threats. And when those threats become real, we're going to start making videos. And it's up to you guys to spread the word on social media and to make those phone calls. We're just I'm just one voice. And Hank is just one voice. We need all you guys in this fight. So, yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so let me, I'm going to let Mac come back here. I want to, I really want Mac to get the last word. So I want to thank everyone that uh, sponsors the Hank Strange situation. I want to thank all the folks that are in the chat, everyone that's been sharing and thumbs up. Right now, we have several hundred people still at this point in, in, awesome. in, the, in the hangout. So that's great. I want to thank you guys for that. Um, the, the folks that sponsor me are Rand CLP, Andrews Custom Leather, uh, Safety Harbor Firearms, and of course, Big Daddy Guns. Um, they're, they're sponsors of what we do here. They allow me to have this platform and say what I want to say. None of these places tell me what to say or what to do. And I really, really appreciate that. I know that people might think that's bullshit, but it's really important to me to be able to do that. I'll, I would r otherwise just rather be on my own. So I always, you know, try to make sure that happens. Uh, Canic fan, uh, fanatic just uh, gave 10 bucks. He said, God bless. Canic fanatic. I like that. Canic fanatic. <laughs> That's one of your fans. I'm pretty sure. Uh, you want to read what he said there, Mac? Yeah. God bless uh, anyone who stands for the second amendment. Do not go quietly into the night. Absolutely. Do not go quietly into the night. Make your voices heard everyone that you oppose uh, or everyone that you oppose these bills. So absolutely, man, we will not go quietly into the night. We will not surrender and I will kneel before no man. So I don't want it to come to that, though, guys. We can stop this stuff through the, through the political um, system that's in place, and that's what yeah. I implore everybody to do. Make those phone calls. Do the stuff. We can stop this and get on with our lives again. Um, if we don't, there is a dark side. <laughs> if they actually start banning guns and taking away self-loading rifles, on the other side of that, it could get much, much worse. I never want to see this country go through that. So. Absolutely. Uh, uh, finally, for me, I want to thank all, all the Patreons. Um, we're Patreon. We're Patreon slash Hank Strange. Uh, Mac, you are Patreon slash Military Arms Channel, right? Yeah, so I don't I don't have any uh, sponsors, but I do have Patreons, and I want to thank every single one of you guys because you're the ones that make uh, the Military Arms Channel what it is and allow us to move forward um, through Copper Custom and through our Patreons. We've been able to bring in a full-time cameraman. You've seen him on the channel for the last three years. Uh, it's Jason, cameraman Jason. And um, because of our patrons, we're able to do that, which means now we're able to crank out literally three videos a week. And I could post more if I wanted to, but I'm just, I got to let the other ones, you know, run yeah. the course and I post another one. Right. But, um, but You're now pretty good with that stuff, videos, man. We can really produce some content now, thanks to our patrons, because without them, we'd be nowhere because YouTube's yanked all of our money. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jordan Hurst gave us uh, five bucks. Thank you, Jordan. Um, I just want to say about Patreon and Max Patreon, one of the things with Mac is that he takes time in his videos to not only encourage you guys to support him on Patreon, he, he supports other people on Patreon himself, but he yeah. encourages you to support other people on Patreon, and that's a big deal. So I, I you know, yeah, I, I, you know, I watch your videos, man. I've, I started out doing this as a fan of yours. I'm still a fan. Whenever I see that, I think, wow, this guy's, you know, that's really cool that you do that. So I just want to thank you on behalf of myself and everyone else who's on Patreon that, you know, we've grown because you're encouraging people to support us. I want to thank you for coming on the show, man, and giving us all this time, you. you know, and I want you to have the last word and then I'm going to hit broadcast <laughs> when you're done. Uh, I'm going to end the broadcast <laughs> when you're done. Thanks for all the kind words. And yes, I, I, if, if you have $5 to spend, don't give it all to the military arms channel, give it to five channels that you support guys. I mean, it really does mean a lot. It does help a buck really does help um, collectively. And yeah, I mean, I think Hank said it pretty much <laughs> as well as it can be said. Uh, thanks for all the support guys. Thanks for watching Hank. Thanks for having us on the show. 
Uh, Omar, I think. Did you get enough camera time, my friend? Did you? <laughs> yeah, give him yeah, a little yeah. bit more camera time oh, if he wants to. Omar just loves live streams. I mean, Come on, bring him in. He's, he's a handsome guy. He's handsome. Get over here, Omar. We, might get, we might get some views like Matt, you know, from Demo Ranch. Thank there we go. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. All right. You want me to hit the stop broadcast button? All right. Nope, I'm good. Thanks, All guys. Right. We're out.